What's happening, weirdos? This is the return of one of my favorite humans and favorite comedians, Tom Papa, who has a new Netflix special coming out on December 13th. It's called What a Day. What a Day. Tom Papa, colon, what a day. Check it out and check out everything Tom has ever done, including You're Doing Great, his other special on Netflix. He's just one of the best around. And this isn't like a getting to know Tom this uh, episode. This is like a hang. He and I hung and hung, and it went to like a really interesting conversation about the ego that I was not expecting, that he was not expecting, and it was it really stood stood stuck. It stuck with me, and I really hope you guys like it. Uh, I'm excited for you to hear it. If you want to see me live before we get to it, if you like whoa, if you like stand up comedy, come see me. I'm going to be in San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Atlanta, Charlotte, and Washington D.C. Tickets to all of those will be are are currently at PeteHolmes.com. And if you like the podcast, it's the season to give a weirdo a gift of a Pete's Pick or give yourself a Pete's Pick. These are actually products that I actually use and actually love, like the Perfect Jean, which is exactly what it's called, the Perfect Jean. I've been looking for these pants my entire life. I literally own five pairs of the Perfect Jeans in five different colors, and I just rotate. I wear them year-round. I wear them to casual things. I've worn them to fancy premieres with a jacket and jeans that look with nice sneakers. They look fantastic. They look like designer jeans, but they're only 60 bucks with the promo code, which is awesome. And they don't feel like designer jeans. Designer jeans feel terrible. There's no give. There's no give. There's no bend. These are 2% um, 2%, 2% spandex, 2.5% rayon. There, I got it out. And they provide extra comfort and movement that your man parts require. That means these, gens, these jeans stretch so your nuts ain't crushed, thereby providing the only true home for your bone. I've bought so many of these and there's no looking back. And here's my favorite part. They last. They are made with the best sewing techniques and premium, highest quality materials to provide you maximum durability. So not only are they incredibly soft, but they last an incredibly long time. I hate replacing jeans, and I haven't had to replace my perfect jeans yet. It's so wonderful to know it's one and done. Buy them in every cut, buy them in every color. No, you're going to look great. No, you're going to feel great. Best of all, they're not khakis. Fuck your khakis and spare your nuts. The perfect gene for the perfectly imperfect man. Just 60 bucks when you use code WEIRDO at checkout and show your support of the show. Liberate your lower limbs with the one and only perfect gene, whether you're working with lemons or lentils, a three-leaf clover, or a big old eggplant. The perfect gene has got you covered. Take a peek at www.theperfectgene, that's with a J, the perfect J E A N dot N Y C and use code weirdo for 25% off at checkout. That's the perfect gene dot N Y C code weirdo for 25% off at checkout. This episode is also brought to us by our friends at on it maker of my favorite nootropic alpha brain. Alpha brain has absolutely changed my life. It's changed my relationship to work, focus, and creativity. It is a nootropic. It's like a, it's like fish food for your brain. It is not a stimulant. It's not like caffeine or an energy drink. It is just simply earth-grown ingredients that have been perfectly dialed in to help you maximize your focus, your concentration, and for me, my creativity. For the past almost 10 years now, I haven't done a podcast. I haven't written a script. I haven't done stand-up. I haven't even gone on a date or uh, sat down to answer a bunch of emails without taking two or three alpha brain about 15 minutes before I need to be dialed in and get into that zone. You absolutely feel the difference. It is a dialed in wonderful feeling that your brain has everything it needs to to function at its highest level. So if you do something that involves your brain, and chances are you do, why not give yourself that advantage? I keep it in my car, in my carry-on for travel. I keep it in my office. It's in the pockets of my jackets. I even just started trying Alpha Brain Black Label, which is impossibly even better. I love it. It's changed my life. And the best way to know if you like it is to try it. Go to onnit.com, O-N-N-I-T.com slash weird. You'll get 10% off everything you see on that landing page. Plus, show your support of the show. That's onnit.com slash weird. Get into it and get your noodle 
cooking with gas. Never said that before. Last but not least, do you like podcasts? Sure you do. Maybe you've been thinking about even starting a podcast or maybe recording a music album. That's what people call them, music albums. Or maybe you want to do some voiceover for that cartoon you want to upload to YouTube. I don't know. But chances are you want high quality studio sound without paying high ass studio prices. Well, Luckily, our friends at Blue Microphones have got you covered. I'm currently speaking into a Blue Microphone. That's why I sound so fantastic. This is a Blue Sona XLR mic for podcasters. It is incredible. And even before we had these guys, for years we were recording this podcast on their most famous mic, the Blue Yeti, which is the simplest USB mic you can find that sounds incredible and is incredibly easy to use even if you're new to recording. It's also the only USB mic that I found that has different settings for solo, meaning the mic points just at you, uh, sitting across from somebody, meaning it points at both directions, or omnidirectional where it records everything in the room. So cool that you can have those different settings. So if you're doing it solo, like Bill Burr, da, 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 an interview like this podcast, or just trying to record an entire sound experience, the mic has got you covered. They're made by the same company that make, that make high-end studio mics that have been used on a lot of big records. Blue has been around for more than 20 years, so you know you can trust them. And today, Blue is part of Logitech for Creators. So show your support of this podcast and get your auditory dreams rolling by going to bluemic.com and use promo code WEIRD for a special deal on any Blue Microphone. That's bluemic.com, bluemic.com, and use promo code WEIRD for a special deal on any Blue Mic and show your support of the show. All right, guys, be sure to check out Tommy Pops on uh, December 13th and hope to see you on the road. In the meantime, enjoy this chat. Get into it. Just cross your legs and get on the, get on the fucking couch. Really? <laughs> you don't have to. Everybody does what you do. Go ahead. Be the little boy. <laughs> little boy. <laughs> With my shoes off? You don't have to. I can keep my shoes on? You can shoes on on the couch. No. Look at this couch. That's this is my single guy couch. Oh, it's filled with cum. I've jizzed oh, all every every no. inch of this cum. Uh, of this cum. It actually is on. cum. You know how like this old people. <laughs> <laughs> There's the riff. So I went to the plastic knows. covered furniture. You went right to the gem. <laughs> this is a black couch. Well, thanks yeah. for opening with jizz. Um, and we are recording. I didn't open with jizz. You did. That's true. But I, but this is my uh, this is a filthy couch is all I was trying to say. It's not it's not actually filthy and it's not actually covered in the J word. I have a chair in my living room that is was from my apartment you? in New York, <laughs> and it is like and we just said last night that it's really like it's not a good chair. We all love the chair. Who's all, who's my we wife all? and I? Yeah. we're like we love the chair. Love the chair, but it's not a good chair. It's your college room chair yeah. that you just love, and it's it's probably got levels of dirt you can't even see. My? But it's but it's should I, are we allowed to keep that as adults in our living room? I'm saying make it into your podcast set. Yeah, your almost zero effort podcast set. I'm. It's a great. You have a nice podcast set. I need a new podcast set for make baking bread with Tom Papa. Yeah, because uh, yeah, the angle's not good. <laughs> it's not flattering. You mean it's not flattering for you? My whole existence is just please somebody. Look how high these babies are. Yeah, just don't catch me this angle. Don't you don't want the travel neck pillow of, of flesh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the pelican and my angle. Po my own podcast. Yeah, your angle. That's it, what I used to say. You have the pillow right there on the Pete Holmes show. I was like, please raise the camera. So, <laughs> yeah. so much of my life is like, I am not the same size as you. <laughs> Like I am so much taller than whoever the stand-in yeah. was or whoever you did the lighting for. Right. Triple it. Yeah. Triple it. And that's what I, Val and I, Val and I are always eating the same size meal. <laughs> right. like, oh, how, I am not the same size as you. I'm a giant. I'm a giant. Help me out. And I did, I recorded my podcast in New York in uh, the Comedy Cellar podcast studio and I looked great. It was oh, like no. shot in this nice angle and I was like, Oh, I'd yeah. be so much more popular if people thought this was who I was. 
if I told them this lie instead of the other lie. Right, exactly. Yeah, this is a better lie. It's a much better lie. Burbigi- so I'm thinking of get, of trying to get a space for the new year, maybe. Hey, maybe we could do it together because Katie and I were just saying, it's like maybe it's time for like a proper yeah. space. And if you have it be like a swing set, you can have different shows. Yeah, that could like be bread. great. Yours will smell like me. And I'm like a little closer to where you go, where you come from. Yes. So it would probably cut your commute down oh, by a right? bunch. Yeah. yeah. Okay, where would that be? Where's the middle ground there? I, I don't like to say on the radio, oh, but I, it rhymes with Merman Mokes. <laughs> Around that area. Merman Mokes. Merman Mokes. Can I say something? We could even do Woodland Mills. Yeah, you could, you could somewhere between <laughs> Merman Mokes and Woodland Mills. That would cut your commute, wouldn't yeah. it? To, from Mohai? <laughs> from Mohai. <laughs> Nobody cares. Uh, what's his name? There's Nobody a guy, cares. John. He's the Punisher. Barenthal. Mm. He lives in in uh, Ohio. I can say that with confidence because I was like, oh, maybe he because I see him about. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, maybe it's hush hush. Yeah, cover of Ohio magazine this month. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there he is. <laughs> Posing by his mailbox. He, li- he literally said, at home in Ohio. It's just, here I am. I yeah, live here. No one cares. Nobody cares. No one cares. What are you going to do? Yeah. They live in but I would be up for it. If you can If you can just promise me a less fat angle. I I'm, can do it. I would, I'd be into it. LFA. Yeah. A less fat. A less fat. Not still fat. Still fat. You want to be relatably fat. I, yeah, that's Not the thing. Skinny. I know. Not too buff either. Yeah. <laughs> If you're super buff, I'm yeah, not sure about that. Well, a buff Tom Papa doesn't work, uh, but no, buff well, Chappelle better. Yeah, weirdly, weirdly, didn't think that was gonna work. Think about killing him softly. The yeah, skinniest boy. Did not think it, that the, was gonna work. It the was youngest, like, smallest, skinniest young man, Dave Chappelle, bone arms, killing it. I'd say loudly, actually, not even softly. It's kind of sets you up for a great compliment that his ideas are bigger than whatever package it's in. That's like right. Like his ideas were, it didn't matter. I also should note, I know there's some scandal happening right now. I don't really follow. I don't what? really follow scandals. So I, I know that there's a Chappelle. A new one? Well, the SNL one. Yeah. I read about that recently. That's a couple weeks old. So it's over? It's we can, over. We don't care anymore? No. <laughs> the river of shit has... Moved it along. No, it funny that didn't that really stick. News site, it didn't stick. No, not okay. really. I did all. All I, I'm just being selfish. I'm just like I just want. I don't want any heat for being like. Why are you still talking about how great Chappelle is? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I'm just saying his muscles didn't negate. And whereas, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, the public has spoken. He became more popular with his big muscles. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Who else is muscly? Kumail. Kumail. Doesn't do stand-up. He got anymore. it. Rogan. Does Rogan still do stand-up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In giant arenas. Okay, yeah, that was dumb, <laughs> Him and Chappelle. Him the, and Chappelle together. Comedy, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They both have muscles. A lot of creatine bits. A lot They're of... looking at each other's set lists. It's like, I'm doing deadlift. You can't, you can't <laughs> open with deadlift. You can't do that. I got to do that. I, I want to talk about... <laughs> When I'm not eating. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it, you know, but these people are all like uh, someone young coming up with muscles. I, I don't know. know. Let's bring it back to us. Me, all of a sudden, I show up with muscles, probably done great. I, I think it would be very funny. <laughs> very, very funny if a very gentle. I actually, when we were talking about Jizz Couch, mm-hmm. I had a marriage ref thing for you, and that's not even how I think of you. Uh-huh. But in my, it really isn't. But because you were the host of the marriage ref, in yeah. my first marriage, we only got, I think we only got in one, it wasn't even a fight, it was just a heated discussion. Mm-hmm. And it was about this. And I'd just love to hear you use your expertise. I do love doing this. I, I know. That's a, it seems like, and it's like a natural place for you. Yeah. <laughs> and then just to lead where we have to talk about Vegas. Yo, of course. We have to talk about, I can't wait <laughs> to talk. In fact, the rest of the podcast will probably be, I'm just, but we, I really want to talk about that trip. We it's took good out. because I literally, I, I, yeah, I literally thought about it last night because I was in a similar situation. Really? Yeah. I have an, I have an update too, because this weekend 
I had a situation that I thought was going to be like our situation. Uh, okay. I can't wait to talk about just the many different ways. Just a, 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 this is a teaser that stand up. <laughs> yeah. You'll never figure it out. You'll never yeah. know what these these shifting sands of the stand up lifestyle. You can't call it. You no, can't call it. You can't. That's a preview. All right, we'll come back. That's a preview. Shipping right tent. after this. <laughs> this isn't an ad, uh, but it is not good. So just, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, my ex-wife and I were driving in my 2001 black Jetta tan interior. Show off. <laughs> we're driving on the highway in Chicago. And my friend Chris Mars, who's a very funny comedian, still is, uh, admired we my first marriage we had all this furniture mm. from my parents like we didn't sure. have any furniture we didn't have any money so our whole like kind of crappy apartment had like huge oriental rugs right like i remember that my desk chair had like <laughs> eagle heads crafted and it wasn't arms it was like two eagles it's awesome leather like studs like you know they got it in new hampshire and yeah. loaded it on a truck and now it's here in my apartment <laughs> and my friend chris admired my desk chair. Mm -hmm. He was a little bit older than me, still is. So he mm -hmm. was like, I love this chair. And then they were getting married and we're driving and, we're, and, and this is like that sort of, it's a little aspy, it's a little hyper literal. I'm just going, so I get where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. I've become a little bit more aware of this blind spot that I have, okay. which is the guy that always wants to go to the same restaurant, the guy that like, if, if I like this restaurant and it's on the way to the club, just go there every day. By the way, we have to talk about <laughs> swim trunks. Don't forget swim <laughs> trunks. Okay, put a pin in swim trunks. Okay. But so I said in that sort of way that I can be to my ex with no awareness that that is a way that I can be, mm -hmm. a little too practical, I was like, well, we don't know what to get them for their wedding. We don't really have any money. Why don't <laughs> why don't we give him the chair that he wanted that I think I said he could even have? I think that makes it worse. I was like, you can have it. Uh -huh. And then I was like, let's give it to him for his wedding. Uh -huh. And she was like, you can't do that. That's totally tasteless. It's totally bad. Keep in mind, though, as you referee, this uh -huh. is like Nick Jr. marriage ref, because we were 22 <laughs> and 24 at the time. Right. Like babies. Yeah. Now you'd be like, what are you, an idiot? I can't get And how old was he? He Same was age? probably 25, 26. Uh -huh. So I feel like we're still college mm -hmm. age enough to yeah. be like, this is a very expensive chair. Yeah. It's your wedding. You want it? That's my point. She's like, you already said he could have it. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to side with me as I say this. No. I, I don't, don't know if I side with me. What what comes to mind I don't in know. that situation? I say, yeah. I say, you're right. I say, fine. Yeah. A hundred percent. Here's the you're chair. You're funny. He's funny. Yeah. He's going to see it and laugh. <laughs> he's also going to appreciate that he got that chair. Yeah. Nice the chair. one wrinkle, and it's a problem that is worth it's worth the bit, I would say, is the overall. And it, the one wrinkle that is still worth the bit is that uh, his partner may not like it. His partner may hate it. She probably would have hated she it. She probably will hate it. This ugly man chair. But they could. They have a curb, I'm sure, where they live, where they could put it out and get rid of it. If, do you have whatever. a curb where you live? Yeah, I have a curb. Yeah, this will go I out a nice on curb. curb. Had a guy come and do the the, the painty letters. Do they paint it and then they say, hey, I painted it? No, he, he asked first. Okay. He said uh, 20 bucks to paint it. And okay. then um, I was like, yeah, okay. I said, is, is I literally just, I was tired. I'm just like, is this a scam in any way? Is there any? You just asked him? Yeah, is there a scam in me. any way? I, I don't mind that you're doing it. I just want to You're going to do it. You do it. The cops aren't going to yell. The DPW guys. Uh, yeah. And what did he say? No, it's good. Yeah, it's, I just, and then he. And That's then, what I want to say to the candy. And bar then his little flaw came out, which is that he likes to tell you who everyone is in the neighborhood. There's a childhood star right down there. And I did so-and-so's house down there. And you know, this so-and-so is your neighbor. And it was like, oh, great. So that's he's, your little thing. He's just a little blabber mouth. That's every driver, every makeup artist too, by the way. I don't even mean it in a bad yeah. way. Makeup artists never stop being you. I always go, who's a bitch? <laughs> it's always the most fun question. Yeah, absolutely. Who is a bitch? And they will tell you. They can't wait to tell they you. They can't wait to tell and you. And it's so super fun. Your, pair, your, your friend had a curb. I would say give yeah, give the chair. It's funny. It's a good bit. See, you saw it, and it might he might also like it. He also might really love it and put it in his office. And okay, see, if my wife would still be together if she thought this way, I'm just yeah. kidding. But if she went, 
it's funny we should do it. Yeah. That would have solved everything. Yeah. Because then I would have been like, oh, no, it's fun. Oh, I didn't even realize I was being funny. And then I would have walked back into it and been like, yeah, let's do it as a bit. But I just meant it as an earnest expression. As an earnest, like, yeah. he really wants this Here's chair a, yeah. and this is a good gift. Like, ver that's the tone that the gift was. The mm. tone you just used. You really right. want this chair and here is a chair. It and was this, that I will tone. be giving you this as a wedding <laughs> gift. <laughs> They're still together. They're still together. A long time ago. They mm. went the distance. Yeah. You always want to be the couple that gets Did you ever the ask him? Did you ever tell him that you were going to do it? We didn't really say in that close a touch. No. Uh, well, Probably because of the chair. Where is the chair? Great question. So those antiques made it, and we're not going to talk about this too long because people are here for that sweet, sweet poppy. <laughs> <laughs> but we loaded up a moving truck and moved to New York City. So mm -hmm. that, that stuff was in Park Slope, Brooklyn for a while. Uh, then we moved famously by <laughs> famously <laughs> the show Crashing. We were living upstate in Sleepy Hollow. Right. So that chair made it quite a ways. Here's how the chair dies. Oh no. Are you ready? Yeah. I threw no, no. <laughs> My wife leaves me. She has an affair and I it was like a symbol and I was always trying to push sim symbolism uh -huh. in Crashing. It it never made it. It's uh -huh. okay. It just wasn't that kind of show. But I was like how funny is it that all of this inherited furniture, yeah. along with all these inherited beliefs, like my religion and all this stuff, stayed at that house? I just left. Uh, I, I don't know what she did with it. If she was uh, yeah. wicked smart, she'd sell it because it was like crazy ass antiques. But I remember my parents being like, we need those antiques. Those are expensive antiques. And I was like, nope. I'm never going back to that house. Wow. I went back and like literally like a cliche, I got my joke notebook, I got my PlayStation. A bag and yeah. clothes and Took gun. it, dumped, didn't flush it. And, <laughs> no, I, I didn't do anything <laughs> like that. But, on fire. But I, I did think about like, you have those moments where you're like, aren't I supposed to do something wicked? Yeah. I, I didn't do anything wicked. Uh, you just got to get out of there. We're too polite, too sweet. Well, I, let's, let's give you the credit that maybe you did do something wicked by leaving that chair that she was obviously against for some reason, and now it's her burden. I, it was her burden, and I bet if she sold it, she sold it for way less than it was worth. Because you know, that was almost like Antiques Roadshow. Like, you got to take this on and be like, this was Eisenhower's chair. Well, it's just like knowing a, her character, you know, I know exactly what she did. She sold it to some... She put it on the curb. You think she put it on the curb? She had a curb, Just too. Just like she put it on this guy. Mm -hmm. This guy's on the curb. Yep. You should have taken this guy to Antiques ah! Roadshow. Don't like her at all. This guy, you know what you find in my drawers? A letter, a handwritten letter from Woodrow Wilson. Oh, nice. <laughs> like, I'm a gem, and you got rid of me, <laughs> and you got rid of that chair. You got you to Antiques Roadshow yeah. your life before you get rid of it. Man, I side with you even stronger right now. Love it, need it. Yeah. Let's get to this. Okay. I've, I, do you, <laughs> I don't normally guide it so strongly <laughs> but i really we, really really want to get to our conversation last time i saw you mm -hmm. we were in las vegas i want to unpack every detail but the one i want to start with okay is that we were talking about how <laughs> how when you're like in vegas both of our wives will say things like bring your swim trunks uh-huh do you remember this yes did you bring your swim trunks? And you and I had this really <laughs> it well, it was your it was just to clarify, it was when you we're always on the road, you're always doing gigs. Yeah. And once in a while your spouse, your wife wants to come and <laughs> you want them to come, but you're also working. So it's a little bit of a thing. Right. And you say to yourself, it'll be okay. She can come. She'll just meld into the work of the thing and it'll be good. And as I was getting ready to take my wife on one of those trips, I'm in my office and I'm getting all my chargers and whatever I got for the gig. And I hear my wife say from the other room, are you bringing your swimsuit? <laughs> this is. And I just went, oh no. That. It's, she thinks we're going to have fun. <laughs> Buddy, I, I forget what Val and I had just discussed because it was something along those lines. And yeah. Val and I are, are we're best friends, one of those couples, one of those annoying couples. Ugh. I know. People hate it. And they love it. I love it. <laughs> but like if there is a thing that it's like operation, we can't it's hard. You can't touch the sides. Uh -huh. or I'm gonna buzz. It's this, it's this issue. <laughs> yeah. And we were we're we're about to go to San Francisco in January. And Val is is gonna come. And I, I find it so funny when you know you have to ask a question, but you know it might upset the other person. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So she's going like Okay, I want to acknowledge that 
it's going to be tricky uh-huh. for you to think about this, but when we're in San Francisco, I would like to see my friend Cat. <laughs> Immediately, just like the iron curtains of darkness just close inside of me where I just want to go. And she knows this, by the way. I'm not talking out of school. It's like she knows that I'm like, we're flying in that day. Of the show. Of the show. Right. You get to the hotel. You take a shower. You get dressed. You go to the show. No cat. I don't know why I'm doing with the Seinfeld, but I know he would agree. No oh, 100%. cat. hundred percent. I need like, and, and Val knows this too. I, I'm getting in a zone. I know it sounds stupid. It doesn't sound when, stupid. I, not, not to you. When I'm alone, you just sit in the room. You might watch a little TV. You might like it's look an, at your notes, but it is about like bringing everything in. You're doing a, you have work to do. And then you bring it all and out. It's, yeah, and it's energy. Anything and I don't you want do, to spend it at dinner with cat. No cat. <laughs> Cat's going to ruin the show. Allergic to cat. But Cat's going to ruin the show. We solve the problem by going after the show, we can see cat. Or you go see cat and I'll see you later. That's fair. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. You can go see Cat. I I'm cool with that. I think I might have even gone that way and she might have even gone that way. But then I was like maybe after the show we could go see Cat, but you know what I'm thinking? We got to get up in the in the morning. It's all You know all what over the problem again. is right there? Yeah. Is she she's got you in a spot where you're thinking. Yeah. All of a sudden you're you're dealing with all of it. You're dealing with her, you're dealing with that. And do I feel bad? Does she feel bad? Am I okay? Am I a dick for doing this? Should I just do this? What's wrong with Cat? What's wrong with me? All of a sudden you're thinking. When yeah. you you would just be on autopilot and just take your wheelie bag in and that, that's over. In fact, that's the whole Okay. So this past weekend, I did a <laughs> it's so great. A private I show. My phone off. Yeah, go ahead. I did a private show in uh North Carolina. Uh-huh. It was a birthday show. Birthday show in North Carolina. Should be bad. Private birthday. Private birthday. Right. I've done private birthdays. We got a bunch of money. We love you. We have a birthday. Come on down. Yes. I am rich. My yeah. wife likes you. Right. Please come perform. Yep. Love that. Almost those. always goes not I'm gonna be honest, only the second time in my career it's happened. Uh-huh. So I was like, the first one, kind of weird. Uh, not Always a, weird. Not a great show. <laughs> yeah. This one, Tommy, I couldn't believe it. It was good. Yeah. It was good. Sometimes they're good. I was out there and I was like, what's going on? I actually, I surveyed them a little. I was like, do you all know each other? They didn't all know each other. Uh-huh. So they were able to become a crowd a little bit. Oh, uh, that's good. But I did not bring my bathing suit. And even coming, this is why I brought it up to your point. Yeah. Coming home, this was yesterday. Okay. My flight was delayed three, four times. Oh, I'm at Dallas-Fort Worth connecting. I had to, uh, on the tram, uh, three times. No. Tram in it three times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even it's a that, one. old Holmesy. Yeah. If he's just doing one thing, yeah, happy boy. Yeah. I don't care. Whatever. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that's not dinners with, with Kat. That's not uh, making little plans. I just have to get home. Similarly, when I'm doing stand-up, I just have to get to the show. I love that clarity. It's totally, it's clean, no gear it's small. Change. Now, can I ask you, you on the uh, on the trammy trams doing that whole thing, yeah. which is a which is a bear, a, a mere mortal would be freaking out. Uh, has your level of peace with those kind of scenarios changed since we've come back since the pandemic? Several pandemics. Yeah, <laughs> the pandemic. That's interesting. My, the first thing that comes to mind is there is a base coat of I can't believe I'm even at an airport. It hasn't faded. Mm-hmm. Like that I'm on a plane. Yeah, that I'm going places. I still have that gratitude. Yeah, is, is that what? What is your take? Yeah, I don't know if it's. I I, I definitely am experiencing it. I'm more experiencing calm. more calm. You can't throw. I've had some insane, like where American Airlines canceled my flight at 5 a.m. on my way to, to the airport. And I have to be there that night. And I, I'm changing airlines and I'm changing flights. And I'm, I, I literally walk in after 12 hours of travel, like right onto the stage oh. in the nick of time. But my stress level is not there. It's just like, all right, we're doing this. Because we'll see how it goes. Almost like seeing it as an outsider in a way. And just being kind of like cool and calm with it, and I, I know that it it has shifted since the break of the pandemic. 
I don't know why. I don't know if it's gratitude. I don't know if it's just it's things are in perspective. But there is just this chillness to the road where where before I would think, I've got to get there. By I yeah. can't believe yeah. they canceled my flight. Yeah. I was never that crazy, but I would be feeling that for sure In inside. I don't have it. Wow. Yeah. I wonder it could be that it broke you. <laughs> Maybe. The one that I like, that I am voting for, uh -huh. that I believe it is. Yeah. We all kind of... It's hard to speak in general generalities about the pandemic because there's so many different yeah. experiences. But I would imagine that you got a master class in surrender, that sort of like snowed in mm -hmm. feeling. What was it except not a canceled flight, but a canceled life? Mm -hmm. And then you realize that you still remained. Yeah, that you were okay. You were okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. Whereas before your identity was so ironed on, like a t-shirt ironed on, uh -huh. <laughs> to what you do and that you show up and that you get places. And we all, I mean, yeah. my hope would be yeah. that we all saw, see, I'm working on this bed, I'm gonna run it by you. Okay. It's, it's based on, I was watching some, I don't like it. I'll, I'll say. Oh, I have that bit. Sorry. You said. <laughs> my only note is you said sorry too quickly because that was very, that was very funny. I was watching. It's in succession. I was saying sorry because I already had the bit, not because of interrupting you. Oh my god! Then See, it was mine. Sorry. I knew you were a <laughs> fine aged wine. Um, it's on Succession uh -huh. where uh, Brian Cox's character says, "Everything I do, I do for my kids." Mm -hmm. Mark Wahlberg on his terrible reality show. Mm -hmm. I say terrible because it's just reality. Yeah. Uh, he also goes, everything I do, I do for my kids, right? <laughs> yeah. And my my father, three impressions. My yeah, father also good. goes, everything I do, I do for my kids. That was my father. Uh -huh. And uh, I always get really lit up when when men, especially successful men, all three of those examples are successful men mm -hmm. that are doing well. Um, say that what they do is for their kids, and, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of reasons. Sure. But talk about identity. One, Dad or, or Brian or Mark, if you stopped working, you'd vanish. That's point one. Uh -huh. You'd go. Like, it's death yeah. to you yeah. to, to lose your your place, your purpose, your or power. your place. Yeah. It's not, or your power is actually a, yeah. better, a better way to put it, yeah. to lose your power. And part of that is, this is how I don't know how to make this funny, uh -huh. being a person who provides for his kids is one of the cornerstones of your identity. So that's about you too. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like your job is part of your identity and, and I provide for my kids is also part of my identity. I'm not saying that's not a good thing to do. I'm saying at a certain point of success, can you please stop saying it's for your kids and just go, this is for me. <laughs> yeah, this is for me. I, I, have, I yeah. have $400 million. This is for me. Because isn't that... Also a good lesson to teach your kids. Like, I want you to do things that make you happy. Yeah. And I'm going to model that for you. Absolutely. I don't have to do a private show. I, I mean, I, cer I certainly do. I have bills yeah. and all that sort of stuff. But like, at a certain point. Yeah. It, why can't you just be like. It's no, for me and you someone, happen to be here. <laughs> it's for me and you happen to be here. I, when you give money to uh, someone on the street. Yeah, I want him to. Be, but it's for you. But I feel, I bet you I feel better than he does. I'm going to guarantee that. <laughs> as much I as I walk you're, away thinking, what a great, how great am I? Yeah. I mean, come on. You get the hit. I am pretty great. And it's not just, yeah, it's it's the thought, I'm the kind of guy who helps people in need. Which is okay. It's okay. Because now you're helping people in need. and We'll take kindness however we can get it. And whatever your motivation is. Right. And you know what? My father and Mark Wahlberg and the fictional character of yeah. Logan Roy <laughs> did feed and, and shelter their families. That's right. But at a certain point, uh, just stop. Nobody just likes stop. me to say out loud that I love money <laughs> and accolades. So... But Tom, I'm going to say it's for the kids. <laughs> that's exact. Maybe it's a, a... Because I love money. <laughs> and I love when people give me accolades. Think I'm great. Oh, I love when people think I'm better love it, love than it, love them. It, love it, love it. I mean, what's what's better than being on a movie? Can you imagine being on a movie set and you're Mark Wahlberg and you're the star of the movie, mm -hmm. Mr. Wahlberg? Here's your herbal tea. Get this out of here. I'm doing squats. 
Like it's the best. This is for my kids. Yeah, and this, these squats are for my kids. They move my gym on a truck here. It's for my kids. Right. It's for you to feel like a special baby boy. Yeah. Just be more honest. You love. Yeah. You made it funny. Yeah. It's for me, and you happen to be here. It's for me, and you happen to be here. And I love money. Right. And uh, I just love money. I love money. The rush of it. Uh. If my father was just like Peter, I just love the ups and the downs of it. <laughs> Way more than anything you've ever. Done. Like, I mean, like right, I don't exactly. know if that's true. Yeah, uh, but yeah. I worry that if I've be. had my moments with you. Yeah, but you, when a big contract comes in, oh, you pay daddy. off. <laughs> but when you're on the line for fifty large <laughs> or whatever it is, the adrenaline. Yeah. Okay, let's finish our Vegas. Let's not even finish it. Let's start it. Yeah. Tell me the story because you got that gig first, didn't you? I had that gig first. Yeah, I've done that gig in previous years. They That's brought right. me back That's a right. couple of times to do that gig. This was a liquor distributor. Yes, one of and, the biggest in the world. And they wanted you to do... And I had come in uh, before the pandemic, before the troubles. Uh, I hosted like a multi-day thing for them. It was even much bigger than when we were there. Mm. And uh, and I hosted and was funny and charming, and they asked me to come back uh, several times to to do this event for them. Wait, this was like the third time you've mm -hmm. done it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because I love money. money. But you're also the perfect, if somebody called me and was like, if I was invited to do something and I couldn't do it, you would yeah. be the first person that I'd be like, <laughs> you know who you really want? Yeah. Is Tommy P. <laughs> right. The king. I can, I'll, I'll do okay in those scenarios. And that's about what you want. Yeah. This right. is what we're talking about. Oh, is, yeah. This is a story about doing a corporate gig, which can go other ways. It can go any other ways. You're grading it on a different metric. I was in one last night. And, uh, oh, wow. and, I, real, and I was talking about this morning with uh, Fortune. And I said, you grade these things differently. This isn't, did I kill like I killed anywhere else, yep. like in a theater or comedy club? No. If you kill in a corporate environment, once in a while it'll be close to that theater experience. Yeah. But most of the times you got through it. Right. You got through it. Because there's a large majority of the people that are there that have, they're all there for work. A very small group loves comedy a whole bunch of them don't, don't give care about shit. comedy don't, don't like comedy don't see comedy out don't know who comedians are and now you walk and they're rich sometimes they're rich this is when actually they're working and, and they're in a they're in a social hierarchy situation in this environment where they're all vying for position and now here comes pete who's going to tell you about his life and what his cat feels what is how his relationship is with his kids and, and they're like, yeah. what do I give a shit about Pete and his, his dating problems? You, <laughs> I came home. I might have even said it to you that night. <laughs> when I was doing that show, I've told the story before on the podcast. I didn't uh -huh. do well. I didn't, I didn't like, it wasn't an abomination, but it wasn't going well. Right. And I was like, the feeling in the room uh -huh. was, why are you telling us this? Because you're just <laughs> right. like, I'm like, like, this is not, you're not so, right. I'm a cat person yeah. and you're looking out at a, these multimillionaire liquor salespeople and they're like, who, who asked? They're thinking this night is about me. That's this right. This is about me. I know I'm in here with 500, 600, 1,000 yeah. other yes. people. Yes, This is my company and I'm going to, I'm going to score tonight. I'm yes. going up that elevator and, yes. and I nailed it. Yes. Hey, you guys ever, you ever... Open up your toothpaste and have it. You, it's you. You know you squeezed it, but it's not on your brush. And now your brush. It kind of gets air in it. <laughs> it's kind of like an air pocket. <laughs> and the guy's like, "What? Yes, <laughs> Why? yes. Who is this? In, Why is he talking?" It actually the experience blew holes in all of stand-up comedy, meaning stand-up comedy is a joint agreement between the audience and the performer right. to make something that isn't. Act that shouldn't work. Right. It shouldn't work. Right. When I come back and I go to the store or I go to yeah. Largo and it's working, <laughs> yeah. since that gig, I'm like, this is a miracle. <laughs> like that they yeah. sometimes laugh at the first thing you say. These these guys. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. You go into some of those environments and they know a comedian's coming. I lit you literally have to say for the people at home, you literally have to say 
when I get there, do they know a comedian's coming? Yeah. And if they don't, uh, say, and now a comedian is coming to the stage. Like yeah. you literally have to say those the words. Word. It's a spell. Because, yeah, because. They, and now stand up like, comedy. Yeah, now stand up comedy. So they can adjust and think They should okay. say. And now stand up comedy is being asked of you. <laughs> right. Of you guys. Yeah, that's right. You're going to. You're going to participate. You have to do it. Right. And it's so <laughs> and now sometimes you roll in. Asked. Sometimes you roll in and you can kill at these things for sure. And Brag. they go, really? I mean, they can, <laughs> no, go, I have. they can go well. The reason I was there was a month prior. I was in Vegas and did one and it went well. But like you said, with the party, they didn't all didn't know each other. That's an advantage. That's a key. Because I when know. you go to these corporate things, sometimes you're walking into a culture that you don't know. Yeah. So if you can, one of the worst is like uh, car salesmen. Those guys are all machismo, all and and they tell you you got to be clean. Yeah, and in front of these garbage mouth swinging people. dicks. Yeah, swinging. They're dicks. a bunch of swinging and, dicks, right? And if you're not bigger than they are, Which then they're not going to listen to you. I always hear stories that Tim Allen sort of famously will come out and be like, they tell him, "Don't be clean, be clean, be clean," and he'll like open with the dirtiest thing, right. like dirty to us, like right. filthy <laughs> to win them over. Oh, hundred percent. Which is pretty great. I, I gave it a ballsy, lot of thought, and but you like, don't need the money. That's what I mean. Yeah. At, at a certain point, you're like, I don't need the money. I need to do well. Right. And I know it's almost like doing colleges can be this way too. Yeah. I know you actually want me to do this. Right. But it's a big play. It's a big play because they could say he you breached. Yeah, well, you breached and we're breached. not paying you. Yeah. Yeah. So those situations are are uh are pretty precarious. And I had one last night. What happened? I want to come back to what what happened with you that night. I feel like we hit it. I but mean, we know. No. Old Holmes no, got the back sweat. But <laughs> when, when uh when so last night I'm doing a fundraiser at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel for this beautiful organization that helps uh, women's reproductive rights all around the world. And I've done it for like five years in a row. And um, and they all know me as funny and I'm their guy and I host the night and I love them, they love me and it's always great. We've had two years of not doing it live because of the troubles. And when I walked in last night, it was a different crowd. They asked me to come to the stage and the place was in chaos in that grand ballroom of the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. The place is in chaos, talking, you know, blah, blah, blah. And in years past, when they say that I'm coming on, they're like anticipating it and wanting it and it goes great. And I walked out there and I had to substitute teacher a little bit of- You had to quiet them down. And then they all kind of like, and look, I totally, Get it? We, these people have not been networking for, and this is all agents. This is this is all showbiz people, mm. and they're and they haven't been in rooms networking like that in these events. Into so they're all. Can I just and say buzzing. at this point in the story? Yeah, and I'm I'm actually surprised I feel this way. Mm-hmm. I feel cold terror because <laughs> here's the predicament. Yeah, I'm thinking about my agents out there yeah. in their suits and they're talking and they're excited and they're yeah. having drinks. And then you come out and you shush and they do get quiet. Yeah. But there's almost this energy. It's like the the hammer's been pulled back on a weird hunting rifle. Yeah. <laughs> that you and them are now in a standoff. You made them shut up. Yeah. And now there's almost like a all right. Like it's almost it could yeah. be antagonistic. Well, you've got it right. And you, you have to follow up the shush. You gotta follow up the shush. And then they still like wanna keep talking. And there was a podium there. And I was like, okay, now when I walk over to the podium, and I wasn't really chastising them. I was very care- cognizant of that. So I walked over to the podium and there's some stuff up on the um on the uh, teleprompter about the organization. I said, when I come over here, this is gonna be really important stuff because I'm gonna tell you about this group and how they saved twenty two million um, uh, women during childbirth and, da, 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 and they all listened. It was all like quiet and they applauded when I got to like the thing of like, so, and that's what they do, blah, 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 and they all clap. And then I wandered away from the podium and tried to tell a joke about whatever, about the pandemic or something. Started talking again, started chat, 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 chat started just talk. And I walked back over to the podium and it got all quiet and I said something great about the leader of the organization. And I just didn't realize I'm not going to kill. I'm not going to be a comedian. This is about hosting. This is about I can get the job done for the client. Without. But 
So I do it, and I come off, and they're like, oh, my God, thank you. You got the room in order. And then the leader came out, and she spoke, and it was great. And But and this is the part that's going to make you cold again. Oh, no. What I find out. Sheer nightmare. Of who's in the audience. It's the head of Netflix Films. It's the head of Warner Brothers Films. It's um, uh, Sean Levy, the director Sean Levy is mm, going to be mm. honored. Uh, there's uh, Nick Kroll's about to do a set. Brett Gelman's there. Uh, Kent Alterman's there. All these, everybody, and all of these executives from the tops of the agencies. It's a very heavy yep. show busy thing. Yep. And they saw me be nice. They saw me do a good job. A prof He's a pro. Yeah. I'm not going and mingling with these people. The way, the way I can have a good night is to kill in front of these people. Yeah. And be like, oh my God, Pete is amazing. Holy shit, Pete's funny. That's interesting. So I just had to stand there in the suit and be like professional and good and charming. But I didn't get to. That's interesting. To but that's kill. not gonna. That's not gonna bug you that long. I, it doesn't. It doesn't bug me that long. And this is where I'm gonna yeah. come back. Yeah. Uh, come back to you, in Vegas. Your instinct in Vegas was, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah. <laughs> this is. Yeah. I am. I that's, know what I'm doing. And what is wrong with you? What I'll say is hotline. Uh, like I'll say a punchline that I love, and yeah. I go hotline, and we just let it go right by. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, Tommy P. It's a weird move for a guy whose biggest fear is that people will find out that there's ugliness inside of him. Uh -huh. Like it's weird to like yeah. go big. Yeah, you'd think I'd be like, "Well, streaks on the china." <laughs> like just do whatever I wanted, <laughs> just to like stay nice and be professional. Yeah, but something will often. It's a survival. It's a fight flight. Yeah, and it's fight. Yeah, and and in Vegas, you made it very funny in Vegas because you you went so far into how. <laughs> how badly this is going like the, right you can do that a little bit yes and you went i went way past, miles the exit. past that yeah, yeah yeah and we're just like oh my god i mean this is really going horribly horribly <laughs> wrong and and then you would do then you would go back and do a joke and it would do well it, it did what like legit did yeah, well yeah i felt it that's what you watching and Dave on the monitor there. they were like that and, went well and, and then, then i would like, still be like f you people yeah that i know I even didn't. bigger than that <laughs> like you never ever let them off the hook and buddy i've done that whatever that's called let's call it the rooster the rooster <laughs> comes out and i've done shows i did a show <laughs> the for the rooster. for the rndc to honor julia louis dreyfus who hopefully is going to do the podcast and hopefully we're going to talk about it <laughs> because it was it, she was wonderful but it was exactly what you're talking about. But mm -hmm. I'd, I, I wish I had played it yours, which was boring. I went up. I told my joke. It was nothing. Like it was death. Yeah. And I and, and Nick Kroll was there. A lot of the same people were there. Uh -huh. And then I went full rooster, like real hard. Uh -huh. Because what happened was there was a couch where Julia Louis, uh, Tony Hale, and Val, uh -huh. my wife, were sitting. Right. And the more I spun out. They started literally falling out of their chairs. Yeah. Like dying. Yeah. And I was like, I, that's the only thing that's working. And yeah. I went real like, this sucks. You guys fucking suck. Like hard. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, every, <laughs> every executive <laughs> in, the in world? Hollywood is at this event. And I, so that. So wait. So do yes. you think that they, do you think that they appreciated that? Buddy, I, I still think about it. Yeah. And I go, <laughs> I was I went on Instagram not that long ago and noticed that Julia Louis Dreyfus followed me. And I was like, oh, I think so. Julia Louis uh -huh. liked it. Yeah. And I talked to her afterwards and she liked it. But I did not mingle the room. And right. the people that did come up to me were were of the spirit of like, that was so funny. Uh -huh. What a weird crowd. But like yeah. like, like um well, Casey, then Casey Boys from HBO, like the head of of development yeah. at HBO was there. He comes up to me and he's like, yeah, these things are always weird. But I was like, uh, I don't know. I like it. I know. It, it filled me with uncertainty, but uncertainty I'll tell you because what you're bringing to mind is mm. you're also plagued. If you play it safe. Like, I think I also would have been plagued if I was just kind of like, is this thing on? And I, at least made, so this, yeah, is, this at least is the question. I had, I had hosting stuff to go do. So yeah. I, I could just bail on, trying to throw more joke pitches and having them miss. Right. You know I, had, I, mean? I just had to do stand-up. You had to do stand-up. So there's like, you you just have but to. But the question is, is so you have to. Huh? What were you saying? 
You have to like, do your act, I think, is what you're going to you, do. Yeah, like when you're in that situation where you just have to do the jokes, well, you the got to do is, the jokes. This is the comfort that Val gave me afterwards, is like if we had seen someone else do what I had done, uh-huh. we would have loved it and thought it was the stuff of legend. Right. Like literally. Yeah. It's the sort of stuff that's like in a documentary where you're like, yeah. look at this. And I was like, maybe <laughs> it looked cool. That's all I had. Yeah, right. I was like, maybe <laughs> like those executives are like, that crazy cat. Well, the, the, the not... <laughs> The not noticing, yeah, that really because the the pretending it's not happening is death, buddy. That night, the rooster, <laughs> the birth, not the birth of the rooster. The roosters come out a lot, uh, but usually the rooster is whatever, not in front of uh-huh. a bunch of executives. I re- recognize that, like, I got into stand up to be honest about what's happening. Right, exactly, and I, and I actually felt like too much, this sounds crazy, almost like Jackson Pollock or something, Mm -hmm. but I was like, it's too much of an artistic compromise. It's not even a compromise. Mm -hmm. It's a wilting. It's a death. Yeah. If I go like, and what else is going on? (laughs) Fortune cookies. They don't really give you a fortune, do they? Like I had to be like, this is death. Like I'm dead. I hate this. This sucks. This sucks. And again, the three most important people to me were were enjoying it. Right. But I like I'll I'll say like a week later, I'm going, wait, what what was that? Like why why did I do that? Because I was probably in a better mood like a week later. Well the problem is when you start to not read it. If you're not if if you're in your own, if the rooster's just spinning and and knocking things around, yeah, uh, which was happening in Vegas a little bit. The rooster came out and the rooster was kicking over the podium. Yeah, and I know for a fact they were enjoying it more than the rooster thought. That's the problem with the rooster. Yeah, and and I think even Val <laughs> said a lot of people were like, "You just couldn't hear the lamps," and that's what you guys told me in Vegas, right? This is why the rooster, buddy, is a very confusing <laughs> side of my psyche. But I think it's it's a it's an exaggeration. I, I might even say a perversion of something that you need to do stand up, which is like like grotesque confidence mm-hmm. taken too far yeah. turns into the rooster. Yeah, or, or that like live free or die snake. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm going to at least be honest or yeah. I'm going to die. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, that did yeah, happen it's in tricky. Vegas. I mean, like you said earlier, like it's so complex. Like these things are so complex Yeah, because they are, because uh, were you, were they enjoying it more than you thought? Were you, uh, were, were you, um, Trying to burn it down just to because that was funny to and you just knew to that, you yeah that I was watching well that's that's what I'm saying happened in the other one yeah was I'm like Julia Louise watching you're watching and and there becomes this other yeah. game literally of chicken it's very appropriate right. it's called the rooster where mm-hmm. you're like I'm gonna but like I never I, I know we're talking way too much about me but I never thought I'd be a guy that would be like one of the moves is. I'll just smoke and I'll be on fire and I'll curse you all as I, as, I, as I crash into a mountain. But no one will say nothing happened. You know what I mean? Right, like exactly. You'll be damned if you say nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. I watched a guy sweat and die. I'm like, no, if the show is watch me burn, the show is watch me burn. Yeah, yeah. I just, it's well, tricky. I mean, like for me last night, you know, I'm driving home and. I want those I want all those people to think that oh my god he is so funny which yeah. every other year it was but that group was so loud and boisterous and I as the host of this thing for 2 hours I'm in no position to start attacking them yeah they, and it it would be unjustified it would just be my ego because well, that's, yeah. they're in a, they're in a they're in a networking situation that they haven't been in yes. in years. They're excited. They're yes. supporting this group. They're going to spend thousands of dollars. It is Tommy Pops. Is not the headlining part of this. It's not about can me. Can I concede with yeah. joy, mm. feeling seen? What's <laughs> challenging to a spiritual person about the rooster uh-huh. is you're like, God damn, there's a big ego like the, in fact, the whole allure to the spiritual practice that yeah. I have is probably because you're like, wow, look, that pillow has my fucking name on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like we're dealing with something that needs to be dealt with. A lot of people mm-hmm. won't deal with it. Yeah. And a lot of people that aren't in show business have huge egos. But that is probably why 
even more than the like, maybe they didn't like me. Mm. There's this fear that you're like, there is something like disgusting in me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I think we all kind of share that fear. Maybe yeah, it's not disgusting. For sure. The fear is I'm I've, too much. If people see me, I'm too much. It's overwhelming. I'm overwhelming. I'm too loud. I'm uh-huh. too this. I'm too that. Right. Like right. it's just like everybody's like, fucking take it easy. And that's the weird kid in junior high. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in earlier days, I would have, I would have, last night, would have messed that situation up. Would have been pushing the jokes and then starting to say, like, what's wrong with you? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. And that wasn't my place for the reasons I stated. And when I was driving home, I was kind of, I wasn't, I was a little bummed that I didn't get to show off and kill and have a fun night and have these directors and head of studios be like, Who's that guy again? Yeah. Uh, but I, they all came up after like, what a pro. Yeah. Thank you for doing that for the organization. And then Nick Kroll, I set up Nick to do a set and, um, and um, did he do all this that? other stuff? And like, I was, I was at least, I wasn't, I wasn't overjoyed because I didn't get what I wanted out of it, but I was proud of myself that I was a pro and, kind of kept my ego in check to make the night like okay for the others. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's interesting because I was hosting mine yeah. and I brought up Nick. It was actually, there's more to the story. Leslie Jones went up and made what I did look like kindergarten. And she, and, and <laughs> right. she, and, but she did it brilliantly. <laughs> but like I was so grateful to her yeah, right. <laughs> because she actually <laughs> roasted everybody. She was making fun of everybody, yeah. like yeah. directly their appearance, their date, their <laughs> their dumb laughs, and I and like, and it was yeah. it was intense. And then you yeah. know who did go up and was the Tom Papa was Nick Kroll. Right. Nick Kroll went up and actually did well with bits uh-huh. and addressing what had happened, like making fun of the night, making fun of us a little bit. Well, a lot easier. And like and I mean, no discredit to Nick, but I mean, after you guys up, yeah. kind of hammered it and made it into a crowd they were like oh okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got <laughs> dude you're making me remember before the show tig nataro was so relaxed that she was bothering me how relaxed she was because i was like <laughs> this is outside it's at 6 p.m it's on sunset boulevard it's loud like well this is going to be bad and she's like don't you see that none of this matters? And I was like, uh-huh. how is that helping me? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, do you want to host? And she was like, yeah, I'll host. I don't care. <laughs> and I was like, great, you host. And like, I think they didn't want to swap the uh-huh. order, but I didn't want to go first yeah. at all. And I, to your point, I would have much rather batted cleanup. Well, this goes back to the thing we were saying about you being at Dallas on the five trains and not being stressed. You, oh, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that it's it's close to the thing of being in that thing last night and being like, all right, it's one of these. Yeah, it's one of these. That, it's, that's it's, it's you know what I mean, like being closer to the tick of it all, managing the expectations. Yeah, and just being like, we've done all this. Okay, can I tell you this though? This is interesting. So Largo, my Largo show was was a couple nights before my birthday show. Uh-huh. And all month I've been like, Largo, I haven't done it in two months. Did I miss your birthday? <laughs> what, no, the birthday show. Oh. <laughs> in, in North Carolina, the one we were talking about. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but all month I was like, Largo's going to be gangbusters and that birthday show is going to be death. Right. And then because Largo, I noticed this phenomenon. If the ticket is over 20 bucks or 30 bucks. If it's 50 bucks, yeah. I swear to God, I can tell that it's a $50 ticket. Uh-huh. Like you just feel there's a little tightness. Oh, the that tight. they're like, this is $50. Like, oh, I really? swear it's. I would think it would be the opposite. Like, we are going to have fun no matter what. That would be wiser. Yeah. That would make more sense. <laughs> yeah. I've done a lot of shows at Largo where the ticket is a, is a jacked up benefit show ticket. Right. And almost every time, and sometimes I don't know, and I go out and I go, hey, what's going on? And they, they're going, uh, and I'm like, Oh, it's how much was the ticket? I, I asked him, like, how much was the ticket? Yeah. And I did that at, at my show. But like the rooster came out just a tiny bit, tiny rooster, mm-hmm. lowercase rooster, mm-hmm. just being like, what is this? What is what I need? And it worked and it got the show going. And it was a great show. And then by the middle of the show, I'm just doing bits, normal bits, and yeah. having a great time. But then when you, because of that show, mm-hmm. I remembered what you remember, which is like 
Manage your expectations. Yeah. Stop expecting it to be like other things. Yeah. And just let it be what it is. Mm-hmm. By the way, this is like the ABCs of a good life. Yeah. It's not just no, good sets. No it's like, kidding. Stop expecting. A hundred percent. Anything. Yeah. And just, but now I'm backstage mm-hmm. in a jazz club in North, in North Carolina, and I'm like, don't expect anything. Right. Just see, yeah. see how it goes. Then you go out. Right. You do the first joke, and they're like. What the fuck? They laughed. Yeah. And then and then you roll and now you're actually happy. And now happy chicken, not rooster. <laughs> happy chicken comes out. I might instead of riffing being like, where are you? I'm going like, yeah. you guys are so great. Oh, you didn't like that one. You're so compassionate. Like this like happy chicken. I always want to be happy chicken. <laughs> but the truth is, I wouldn't have become happy chicken if I hadn't remembered rooster on Thursday. Then happy chicken came out on Sunday. Because like I kind of need those, the bumper ball bowling that that corrects my ball a little bit. That yeah. gets me in the center of the lane. Yeah. There's also, I mean, ego is a big part of it, you know, because. I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah, because you, I had one that was far worse. Okay. Since I saw you. Put a pin in that. We're going to do the mid-rolls in week when we come back. I, I will I, be right back. I feel like I've been telling these horrible <laughs> stories. Finally, Tommy P. I'm just kidding. You no, will, we're uh, in it together. Okay, here comes Tom Papa. We'll, we'll be back in literally two minutes. Pardon the interruption, weirdos. We will literally be back to Tom Papa in one minute. Let me just tell you, I was just talking to somebody about ketamine therapy and how much it changed their lives. And let's be honest, you just need to take better care of yourself is not an appropriate response for people struggling with their mental health. You know, you live with it. Sometimes you need something more to achieve a real and lasting breakthrough. Well, maybe it's time to check out a guided ketamine therapy program from our friends at MindBloom. The struggles we face for our mental health can loom large over our lives, maybe even yours, maybe someone you love, maybe you've tried everything, or have you? MindBloom is the solution for the next chapter in mental health and well-being. MindBloom is the leader in at-home ketamine therapy, offering a combination of science-backed medicines with clinician and guide support for people looking to improve their mental health and well-being. MindBloom connects patients to licensed psychiatric clinicians to help them achieve better outcomes with lower costs, greater convenience, and an artfully crafted experience. To begin, you take MindBloom's online assessment and schedule a video consult with a licensed clinician to determine if MindBloom is right for you. If approved, you'll discuss your health history and goals for mental health and and treatment with your clinician to tailor your MindBloom regimen. MindBloom will then send you a kit in the mail complete with medicine, treatment materials, and tips for getting the most out of your experience. After, listen to this, after only two sessions, 87% 87% of MindBloom clients reported improvements in depression and 85% reported improvements in anxiety. So it is time to end, sorry, it is time to enter the next chapter in mental health and well being. Let MindBloom guide you. Right now, MindBloom is offering our listeners $100 off your first six session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash Y-M-I-W, like you made it weird, Y-M-I-W, and use promo code Y-M-I-W at checkout. That's go to mindbloom.com slash Y-M-I-W, promo code Y-M-I-W, for $100 off your first six session program today. One last time, mindbloom.com slash Y-M-I-W, promo code Y-M-I-W. This episode is also brought to us by our friends at PYM Choose. For those of you watching the video, I'm holding up the delightful yellow box right now. PYM, prepare your mind. These choose help you manage feelings of stress, anxiety, and overwhelm. It's wonderful. I love it. I swear by it. When you're feeling worried, when you're feeling stressed out, or as we like to say on We Made It Weird, Val and I always talk about having a bee in your belly. I can't tell you how many times I just can't quite put my finger on what's going on, but I just feel a little bit underwater, stressed out, and I get a little bit fight, fight, freeze. I'll freeze and I won't be able to do anything. Pop in two of these delicious natural citrus flavored, no sugar added chews, and really within minutes you start to feel more centered calm and in control. I love them so much. As soon as I tried them the first time, I subscribed my mom and my brother, just so happy to find something for anxiety and stress that is natural, 
non-addictive and non-psychoactive, a solution that is just that simple. I like taking it at the start of my day that eases me into whatever it is I have to undertake, but I also take them at the end of the day to help me wind down and relax away the stress of the day. How does it work? PYM Chews are comprised of proven amino acids. This is not woo-woo. This is straight science. These complexes and adaptogens help support your brain and your body's ability to organically support and manage and tolerate stress, anxiety, and overwhelm. It helps your body systems do what they're designed to do, but it gives them that little boost. I also have been trying some of their new products. This is PYM Mood Magnesium, a dietary supplement. It's amino-infused magnesium to support stress, again, cognition, and sleep. Again, this is something I take in the morning in my smoothie, rounds out the edges of my day, rounds out the edges of my inner reality, and also, again, at night, helps me to fall asleep. I just watched a video about how powerful and effective magnesium can be and what a better alternative it is to taking some over-the-counter sleep solution. 70 or something percent of uh, adult Americans are deficient in magnesium. It is a huge, huge, huge help and a secret weapon in my arsenal. Their Mood Magnesium was formulated by neuroscientists and nutritional psychiatrists. It includes three magnesiums with the most evidence to support their effects on stress and sleep, manganese L-theanate, malate, and glycinate. It's very effective in helping me fall asleep faster, sleep throughout the night, and wake up feeling rested. I can attest I took it last night and went out like a baby with no effort. It's delicious and easy to use thanks to the yuzu flavored power. Both of these products, guys, PYM is on a mission to end the stigma surrounding mental health and to make a better mood accessible to all. And a percentage of their profits, 1%, goes towards mental health nonprofits, including Bring Change to Mind. So get a little bit more control over your stress, your overwhelm, and your sleep, and your overall health by going to you can pym.com slash weird and use promo code weird for 15% off and show your support of the show again that's you can pym.com slash weird use promo code weird for 15% off and show your support of the show all right let's get back to tom papa and we're back tom papa what happened what do you mean i was there no i was in salt lake city doing this gig and it was they had me go up in a uh, what essentially was a cocktail party for 500 people, all standing up. There's a stage, but all standing up, a photo booth, two open bars in the room. Oh, no. With people getting hammered and, and drinking, and this is their first night there, and they're all seeing each other, and they're all doing a thing. And, I mean... It made last night's at the Beverly Wilshire seem like <laughs> like they were paying attention. Like this was a, this was a like a keg party in high school, and they introduced me, and they said just go up and do your thing, and unlike the Tim Allen thing of like I'm just gonna I'm like I have to do 20 minutes, and I think it was a half hour, and. Uh, this is just one of those, and I went up there, and there, and that when I'm walking around, there are people like taking selfies with me because I'm there, and so I stand up there, and I see Pete, I see like eight, ten people creeping to the stage, laughing, and the rest of the room is ah, oh my god, and I was like, all I can do. This is a shit show. This is insanity. My ego wants to say, I'm not doing this. But the giving part of me said, these six people that took selfies with me are laughing. And I'm just going to tell some jokes to them and make a comment about what's happening in the room. And I'm just going to put a smile on my face because I just don't want to disappoint these six people that are actually here paying attention. Can I just say, this is? I really think, I know we're talking about stand-up. Yeah. But... Being able to make that calm decision Uh is just, I think that's actually what we're talking about. It is what we're talking about. A moment of clarity where you go like, I could go, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, and like make it about you, or you just go like, ah. I learned that early doing outdoor shows. Before the pandemic made outdoor shows somewhat palatable, 
I remember like you always feel like you're bombing outdoors because it's open air and it feels horrible. And yeah. you, but I would see people's faces and they were like smile and I was like, Oh, I'm the one I'm the one person who yeah. hates what's happening now. They're actually okay. Don't assume <laughs> this is hell for them. And just do your act and put a smile on your face and walk out. And then people are like, Wow, that was great. And you're like, it was the worst day of the year for me. <laughs> <laughs> but just pretend. <laughs> Sometimes you just I'm have gonna to pretend. I'm going to play a recording of that before shows. That'll be my rooster <laughs> uh, repellent. Yeah. Because like I do, again, I love how passionate and how locked in and how even erratic I can be. It, it's, a, it's a, like I said, it's a superpower. It's just like this riffy, <laughs> undulating, rah, rah, rah. But I'm like, yeah. the best shows I have, I li- I've been listening to Father Greg Boyle, who founded Homeboy Industries, wrote three books. Mm-hmm. And they're just beautiful books. And every story is a story about putting someone else before you. Yeah. I don't mean it's, it's not saccharine like Chicken Soup for the Soul, uh-huh. not to put those books down. I'm just saying like it, it, they're real. They're yeah. real stories about sacrifice or, or bonding or loss. Or, or And then that brings people together. This brings people together. Some lesson. Uh-huh. They're all about humility, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Like, so many of them are just about like sharing your advantage being humble mm-hmm. and finding joy in unexpected, unexpected sort of broken places. Mm-hmm. And I, I I was texting with Father Greg. I was like, I used to think that what I need to do before a set is look at my notes. And now I realize I need to go on a walk and listen to a book mm-hmm. like one of yours yeah. or, a, or similar. Yeah. His are the best ones I found because it's really about, I used to say, I, what I said to him was opening my heart. But what I'm realizing in this conversation is it's not just opening my heart. It's about making my heart so big that it squashes down my ego to a a, a small, small. I I don't need as much of him to come up with me as I thought I did. You don't need him at all, I would say. Yeah. But that also, but I'm interrupting myself with the question I was going to ask. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. Which is um, there is a certain amount of, him that has to be present or at least he's got to be in the back seat because yeah you it's you know you're the one person standing up there with a microphone like there has there is a certain amount of ego that even gets you into the position of thinking that you talking about your cat in front of a place that doesn't care about you is even a, a thing you would even consider Completely agree. going through yeah so like you need it but do, how but in its right place well, it's funny that you say backseat because if I had opened up my heart before the Vegas show, that doesn't mean I could have just gone out and been like, look at you supplying liquor. It's so nice of you guys to make sure <laughs> we all have liquor. Like I couldn't just do that. Uh-huh. The ego would have had to jump into the front seat and calmly drive. Like, mm-hmm. cause he's the one that can go like, I'll do the brave thing. I'll, yeah. I'll bite the bullet yeah. and take the pain. Yeah. It's about survival in those situations. So you're like, whatever it takes. Right. But, you know, when I was watching you in Vegas, I was like, the overriding thing for me was he's doing better than he thinks he is. Because I knew you. it was a bit that you were ripping him apart, but also I knew you weren't feeling it. Yeah. You got to a point where you weren't allowing yourself to realize yes. you had actually dug yourself out. Right. You right, would, you would, yeah. And the headline here is taking it all way too seriously. You know what I mean? Like, why? <laughs> Somewhat. I, I, I think I well, taking myself too seriously, not necessarily uh-huh. the show, right, right, right. But like the experience. I will say the the highlight of that show for me, and when I got the biggest laugh in Vegas, was when I said to this group of salespeople, uh-huh. "Don't feel bad for me." Right. I'm I said old PD's gonna sleep great after this show. <laughs> and I was like, and don't act like you haven't been exactly where I've been, where you're trying to sell something and it's just not connecting. <laughs> yeah. But then I looked at my set list and it said like fucking coffee. And yeah. I'm like, these people <laughs> do not care about my thoughts on coffee. Yeah. yeah. Where you're like, I hate when you know that there is something you could do, and sometimes you're not allowed to do it. Like there were there were yeah. limitations on what you could talk about. You couldn't be dirty, this, that, the right, other. Right, exactly. I mean, when the beautiful part of it is, 
And you always have to remind yourself when you go into these things, a pitch meeting, a set, um, a podcast, whatever, and you're stressing on your way. And it's like, you have to remind yourself, I'm funny. Like mm. I, I'm, my whole adult life is being funny. Is being funny. It's going to be, and that's what was cool about watching the rooster take control was <laughs> you weren't going to be funny talking about coffee. You were going to be funny doing this other thing <laughs> that no one hired you to do. That's the but Julia were, Louis but Tony they hired, But they did hire Pete Holmes. Yeah. And Pete Holmes brought this version of that tonight. <laughs> and he's doing this and he's ripping the thing down and he's going into this self-deprecating thing to depths that you haven't seen. Yeah. And it was like, and it was great. And that's why. those There were moments of greatness. Yeah. But then unfortunately I'd be like, Ah, oh, fuck, I got to go back to my ass. <laughs> you know, I appreciate- I did well before you. You did do well. But I had the advantage of being with them for a long, like they knew me. Yeah. They were like- I should have taken a note uh, from just like, because I was watching it and I was like, they're not giving him enough. Yeah. Like I was like, this isn't enough. But, but that's a weird stance Great on a curve. Take. Those things have to be graded on a curve. That's right. But That I, was kind of killing. No, I, I completely right? agree. But going back, it's this line, I believe it's from Chinese Zen, the great way is not difficult for those who have no expectations. Mm -hmm. Meaning, and the thing that you and I always talk about from the last time you were on the podcast, is like you and your family were going to go out for the 4th of July, just to recap real quick, and you, and you had that voice of your parents being like, yeah. it's the 4th of July, there's going to be nowhere to park, there's going to be tons of traffic, it's going to be too loud, it's going to be hard to leave. <laughs> and then you went, you parked, you watched, you drove home, it was easy. Yeah. And I was like, that these things, the thing that you said all those years ago and what we're talking about now yeah. are related. And the power, like I really mean literal power mm -hmm. that you can seize over your life and have a better life. It yeah. sounds like I'm Tony Robbins right now, no, but I'm no. just saying like the key of humility, humility is having no expectations. And, and arrogance and ego is having expectations, you know? And, totally. And like that, so I'm just saying for people listening, very few people listening do corporate comedy shows. Right, yeah, yeah. But everybody listening knows when you go to a party, you go on a date, you go to a job interview, you go to a job, you go to anything, and if you have- Or even smaller than that, um, going to the store, sitting in traffic, yeah. having a conversation with a stranger, booking a flight, whatever. Right. Like- it's 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 in all of those things. It's in every it's literally in everything you do. That's why old Holmesy, when I literally traveled all day yesterday and had no problem. Right. That's an easier and I've seen I've been there where comedians are losing their mind because a flight is yeah. delayed. I have yeah. a much easier time squashing that ego. Mm -hmm. The voice of the ego that says, I should be home. I want to be home. Mm -hmm. You're American Airlines. You're supposed to get me home. Yeah. I don't have any problem with that. But when you bring my my comedy into it, suddenly mm -hmm. I'm like, you like sometimes you know what one of my save lines is? I go, you have no idea how I think it should sound right now. <laughs> like up here. Yeah. Like in my mind, uh -huh. the laugh this should get, yeah. you'd lock me away. Yeah. <laughs> but conversations like this make that go away. I watched this, uh, I was in some place and I was watching. Um, Is this place you? Old, <laughs> this place was a bad hotel in Northern California. And it, I was watching this weird comedy channel and they were showing comedians, I might have said this to you, uh, comedians of um, Paula Poundstone, Louis Anderson's generation. Yep. And it was a bad TV show. And it was like a series of them. It, was, it wasn't like uh, Evening at the Improv, but it was something like that. It might have even been out of Canada. I don't know. But uh, I was watching. They were all such pros. And I watched Louis Anderson come out and tell a joke, and it, nothing. And the second one, nothing. And you see in his eyes, because you know as a comedian, you see in his eyes, I'm on TV, and I two jokes out of this short set just whiffed. I'm in trouble, but he never shows you're in trouble. Only a comedian would see that little glint in his eye yeah, yeah, yeah. and he just bared down and made a chuckle and did a thing and, and dug himself out of the hole and had a good set at the end. But like you saw him yeah. not lose, you saw, and there was an elegance to that. Okay, 
this is my favorite conversation I've had in a while. It's how to bomb well. <laughs> and I actually think one of the keys to life is learning. Richard Rohr says the point of Christianity is to learn how to lose well, uh -huh. meaning like die well, like yeah. be humiliated, be humbled, and be broken mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So we're having an interesting conversation. I, I'm going to add to your Louis Anderson. I watched uh, Bill Hicks in Montreal. It's, um, it's a famous special where he goes, the news, like all those bits. Uh -huh. And if the rooster watches that special... I'm like, this crowd fucking sucks. Uh -huh. It's a festival crowd. Yeah. They've seen too many shows. They're leaving this guy out to dry. Right. And Bill Hicks, King Rooster, if there ever was one, like who's yeah. always going to be real, yeah. knew how to throw it in a gear. He what? He's sweating. Yeah. And right. I don't think he's just sweating because he's hot. I think he's sweating because it's also like, you see it. Where are these idiots? Right. Not these idiots, but see, that's the voice like, of the what's right, happening now. right now. What's happening right now? Right. And he's it's a better way to put it, right? What's happening right now? What's happening right now is which is a better question to it, ask. It is a better instead question. Instead of listen to how I phrased it. What's wrong with these idiots? Right. How about what's happening right now? Exactly. That's an epiphany. You're listening to me have an epiphany. Me too. Instead of what's wrong with these idiots, yeah. just simple. What's happening right now? What's happening? What's happening right now? Because I know what I do. Yeah. And I know how this normally goes. Yeah. What is happening right now? And, it, and let's assess it and figure it out and get through it. And, and, and not get angry about it. And have the humility <laughs> to maybe go, I don't know what's happening right now. Here's the other one. So then I go to the store, like maybe a week after I saw you in Vegas, and I am trying to recalibrate and, and get my rooster in check. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the back. And this young woman who was very funny went up on stage to host and her whole set was was these people just letting her whiff, whiff, whiff. Uh -huh. whiff. Good jokes. Yeah. Like solid jokes. She was performing. Yeah. She was present. She was right on. And I'm just going like, what is this? And then Tommy P, I swear to God, like a voice of Christmas past was like, <laughs> Don't you remember this is what it is? Mm -hmm. Like for most of your career, oh yeah, you were her. Yeah. And guess what? Every once in a while you're still gonna have to be. Even Louis Anderson yeah. doing the TV taping or Bill Hicks taping his special or old Holmesy in Vegas. Yeah. And then sometimes the birthday show is gonna be fantastic. Like yeah. this is what I mean, the shifting yeah. sands of stand-up. But what a good classroom or playing field for us to exercise these these exercises i'm going to say exercise these exercises because in in like your everyday life it's uh if you know the thing about what you were saying like why you you struggle with it in those moments because it's as a comedian you're supposed to tell the truth about what's happening right now right so like it's it's that when you're around the house or when you're you know at the store or what, what? What? All that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. You mean that's the appropriate time to do that? You should be doing that all the time. Yeah. It should always be a little detached from yourself, which really means your ego isn't in the driver's seat. Yeah, you're watching yourself. You're, <laughs> you're being... just a little bit like, why am I? Why? You know what? What's happening now? What's happening now? Some guy just cut me off and took the, you know. Just cut me off in in line and has got one up on me and yeah whatever it's not uh, it's not that important and it's not it's it's not your ego that's happening it's if you're able to detach from it then like that whole attitude of seeing it and then you're living your life with a sense of elegance I right? agree not just I agree. not like you're set it's funny that you say that a lot of spiritual things that I've studied are like let's say let's call it right minded wrong minded or or, or ego or witness or whatever you want to say yeah but they say that being right-minded or being centered mm -hmm. might be a good way to say it is noticing that you're not centered but not judging it right but like you have that detached like you said back seatedness yeah yeah where you go like like i can be like oh tom you didn't but i'm like you hurt my feelings but i can also not justify how i feel does that right. make sense? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like there's a difference with me just kind of calmly noticing that a chemical reaction, I'm not yeah. putting down emotions. I'm saying I had an emotional response. But to justify it means to really fill up that suit and be like, and this is me, as opposed <laughs> to just going like, hey, this is what's happening right now, but I'm not, I'm not all stuck up in it. 
Right. It, 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 your, meaning your behavior might not even completely change. You just might do it differently. You just might still tell you you hurt my feelings instead of just being like, I am one with everything. I don't care. <laughs> you can still, but you right, don't, right. You don't uh, nail your identity to it. Right, right. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, whenever you think of these like Zen-like states of like getting through your life, uh, I always slip into, well, I can't do it because then I'm powerless. <laughs> and then I'm just like letting people run over me or I'm, mm. you know, just, uh, you, you, but you can have strength and power while also it's actually more powerful if you don't take the bait and you don't get pissed at the guy who cut you off or you, right, you right. know what I mean? Father Greg would say, he does say in those books that I just mentioned, it's like, it's not, I don't want people to mistake my kindness for weakness. He's like, kindness is the only strength. Right. It's like everything else is just an illusion of just like banging pots and pans and completely <laughs> losing yourself. Right. And, and uh, Course in Miracles is talking about being defenseless is actually the only, because if I'm defending myself, I'm validating that I'm being attacked, which reinforces the idea that I am vulnerable and, and just increases fear. But being defenseless is actually the only safe position. Right. You can't you can't really necessarily take that literally in the sense that I'm defending myself by taking this breath. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm yeah. keeping myself alive. But there is a there's a status that you can have mm -hmm. that you see in people like Eckhart Tolle and stuff. Thich Nhat Hanh, when they asked him about like, what would you do if you got attacked? Like if somebody punched you. And his answer was really interesting. He was like, let me teach you how to be in a place where people won't want to attack you. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean monks, by the way, famously have been murdered and attacked. Sure. But he's saying there's a way that you can kind of go with the river so much that you yeah. blend into the background so much <laughs> that no one would pick you. Obviously, I'm saying that's not always yeah. literally true. I have, a, I have an interesting thing kind of related to what we're talking about i'll throw it at you just to see what you what you think there's we have uh we have dogs that we have to walk around um to the, to the end of time <laughs> in our neighborhood and um there's a guy and we have a black lab who's a big black lab she's a the sweetest thing on the planet just these big cookie dough eyes and just wants to love on everything mm. And there's a guy. Why who, are you telling me this? It's a, it's a comment. Why are you telling me about your dog? I'm the audience in Vegas. Yeah, and who cares? A, and there's a guy that walks a golden retriever through the neighborhood. Actually, he doesn't walk it. His wife walks it. He walks ahead of her and marches and looks for trouble. Oh wow! And my dog loves golden. Has a best friend golden retriever, and I think every time sees this golden retriever wants to go and say hey are we playing today and the guy sees it as my dog is out of control and attacking and he like march he makes his wife walk the dog behind and he like just walks up ahead like who's gonna and this my wife exactly what we're talking about. and my wife has walked um has walked him walked our dog and he lunged at the at the guy, my, my dog jumps when he, when she sees you, like wants to hug you and jumps up. It's not an attack in any way. Yeah. Did that to the guy and he got all like, what are you doing? This is, your dog is out of control. And like yelled at my wife when she was alone and they got into a fight, a verbal fight. And my wife was like, the dog is fine. He just loves your dog. What What, what is the problem here? And he, they got in this huge fight and I walk the dog a week later. I come around a, a, a turn and he's marching ahead with his wife. My dog kind of like, oh, like leaps, doesn't come close to As him. As if but he leaps. didn't hear and anything he, before. <laughs> yeah, and he goes, he says, uh, this is what I'm talking about. I don't want that dog coming after me. And I snapped and I said, oh, you're the guy. <laughs> I said, you're the guy that attacked my wife when she was walking these dogs. You're the guy that came after my wife when she was walking in her neighborhood. And let me tell you something. You go near her again, I'm calling the police on you. How dare you attack a woman like that? What? I just, what? I didn't, I, uh, uh, 
you're going to call the, like, I'm calling the police on you. Keep walking. Keep walking, big man. Tommy Pops. And he, and he goes. You said keep walking, big man? Yeah. And just, and had, and he yeah. He threw out a big man? I threw out a big man. What? Who attacks a woman out on the street? Big man. That kind of thing. So I have oh, that's, this. That's worse. And that's just, but, it, but I was proud of myself that I didn't just say, hey, like, I'm going to fucking come and get, get you, or yeah. I'm going to punch you, or I didn't threaten him. I just kept it in what it was, which was he threatened this woman and mm -hmm. my wife. And this is on you. It's not on us. So fast forward. My wife has another thing. She's feeding the, <laughs> our, our, we have a guy that gives out treats to the dogs. So they're off leash right now at this guy's yard. And they come a ramp marching around. The dog goes running. They have another fight. They have another fight. But my neighbor is like this big dude. And he calms everything down. He's like, there's no problem, whatever. So there, she has her second fight with this guy. He, wait, even after Tommy after. P let out the rooster. This guy, we can't be his only problem. No one walks in this stance without. He's looking, right? That's what I mean. Right. If you're defending. That's right. You're right. confirming that you are, that it's kill or be killed. Right, exactly. Everything about you says the world is kill or be so killed. So let's go. We're, we're going to fight. We're yeah. gonna, we've yes. taken a martial arts course because we want to fight. And the fight started <laughs> for him that morning in the kitchen. You know what I mean? Like right. he was looking oh. at his refrigerator like, well, how can this hurt me? <laughs> yeah. The elevator, the cars, the people. A hundred percent. It's a lens. Yes. It's a hundred percent a lens. We're not the only ones he's running into. No, in fact, whoever he runs into, you right. could run into Fred Rogers and you'd be like, <laughs> what do you mean, your neighbor? Yeah. All right, so so we have that situation. Now, I'm, like I said, I have to walk these dogs to the end of time. Two times a day, they've got to go. Make huge make those bowel huge movements. Huge shits Just all over the neighborhood and I have to carry them in my shit. hands. Like, a, like you won a terrible goldfish. Why? What has happened to my life? Yeah. I'm walking, I see them, I'm passing them, I see him. He's puffed. Gets his puff, and I go. Chest puff. Yeah, and I pull Bella in a little tighter. Not, not you know. You don't she, want to instigate. I, she's not noticing. And I, I have to live in this neighborhood. I have to do this like to the end of time. And I go. Happy Thanksgiving. You went the other way. I went, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, happy, happy, hey, hey, you too. And his wife goes, happy Thanksgiving. She like, just, just so relieved that we have this, we have this route we can take. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. You should come over. I'll, I'll have the cops pick you up and take you to us. <laughs> Three days later, I'm walking. There's this one tree that has leaves falling in our, that has like fall like leaves, like the one piece of three by three thing that looks like fall yeah. in our neighborhood. Yeah. They're coming down the thing. They're coming down the, the opposite way. I can't handle how many they, times you're running into these people. I know. It's, it's, I can't handle it. I can't. It's someone changed me. the route. This is my, this, like, I live here. You this live is, here. He, I know he doesn't. Why Change are you on my route? Change the route. Change the route. I see them coming down the thing. Uh, they get into the street to walk around me. I see them. And I said, uh, you might want to come back on this side of the street. It's the one piece of fall you're going to get this season. It's all in that tree. What? That one tree looks like autumn. You, should, you, you might want to come back over here. He goes, oh, it's pretty nice. I'm dead <laughs> that you're confusing this man into kindness. <laughs> oh, was it? What? <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, no. Yeah. Autumn. It does look a tear. I got one more. This eye. is a third one. This is all like within a couple of weeks. Uh, there's a blind spot where you turn when I go back home, and he's come, and it is a tricky spot. You got to go wide. If your dog's leading, and he's there. And I saw them walking, and I know we're going to, I just in my whole head, I'm thinking we're going to hit him at the blind spot. And we come up the thing, and I go wide, and he's at the blind spot in front of his wife. And I said, uh, "I said those those tight those tight turns will kill you. You got, you got those, that's a high risk area you're in." He goes, "That's why I walk first. I was like, "Good job." <laughs> Wait, 
you got a little glimpse into the philosophy. <laughs> yeah. He's walking ahead. <laughs> He's right. proud he walks it. We learned a lot. <laughs> we did learn a lot. It's not like, whoops, I'm walking ahead. Uh -huh. Like, I do it because tight turns will kill you. Yep. My wife's going to get knocked over. And I'll go first. I'm so gonna... it is, he's a detail. He's um, not a husband. He's a detail. Uh, what do you mean? A security detail. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's secret service. He's secret service. Uh, and you're the kind of schmo that he's trying to eliminate. Not totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but I, i've just been now i've been coming so this is what i'm just i'm i can't walk out it's walk, picking up this shit is enough of a burden i don't now, have to also be kung fu fighting along the way i went home and told my wife this i have a new friend who the guy the thing the ha, ba, da, happy thanksgiving falls here F that guy. <laughs> Can I ask, was your motivation for the happy Thanksgiving and the come back to this side of the street, there's an autumn, and the look out, these corners? Because if I, and I do it all the time, I, I catch myself writing, let's say, a firmly worded email. And for me, that just means no yeah. exclamation points and <laughs> one fewer please. But I, I'll write this email where I'll, I'll say something like, there's no rooster in my other era elements of life. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why he comes out on stage. I yeah. should like let it out in bursts. Little, little <laughs> yeah. slow gas leak. Yeah. But um, if I write an email where I'm like, uh, I wish I was I wasn't the only one taking care of this. Can someone else do this, this, or this? Like I, I feel like I'm carrying too much of the load here. Yeah. I'll hit send and then I they'll reply never to my liking. Nobody's ever like, hey, I'm so sorry, blah, blah. It's just always that. And then I go into super nice mode where I'm like, oh yeah, well, you know, I just really I was just kind of kind of feeling things out. And like, are you compensating for your like I'm gonna call the police or what's happening no. that you changed your behavior? I uh -uh. felt like it was a no. No, then it's what not. are you doing? It's not because uh I'm just trying there's there's different moves, right? There's different moves to solve this problem. Well, you're and just the first one was like to confront him and be like, You back the fuck off. This is um, you, this is you're not gonna do this with my wife. That's not happening. You went Denzel. I mean, now we're still like now we're still nose to nose, and it's a fucking thing, you know. And you know, God forbid, my dog just just does jump up and say hello, and you know, cuts his arm with his her big fingernails. Um, you know, and you can be in trouble and whatever. So I I, I just they're, don't. I'm not gonna live. I like I said, I'm carrying shit twenty times a day on these walks. I I can't live. It has to be easier. Yeah. So let me try this. How about, I don't know this guy at all. The only interaction has been, get your dog out of here. <laughs> he's got knobbly, he's got little bony legs. He's got funny socks. I, who knows what this guy is? This is a weird way to walk with your wife. I, don't know what the, what, I have no idea what goes on in that kitchen. I don't know what that kitchen looks like. It's not where I live, I guarantee you. It's not anything I understand. I don't get what this is, but why not talk to the guy for a second and just be like, look in the eyes and say, happy Thanksgiving and see what that does. It was just another take on stay away from my wife. Yeah. It wasn't motivated by guilt or rethinking no. the strategy. No. It was just like. Well, rethinking the strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Did, but no part of you was like, I should have gone happy Thanksgiving on the first go? Or you think no. there needed to be a base code of watch yeah. yourself? Yeah. I don't know this guy at all at this point. This is the first interaction, right? And and he's made my wife very upset. And, you know, I am I I am on the road and she is alone and she's walking. The, she doesn't have to deal with this guy. Yeah. You know, who does yeah. that? I would never do that. If a yeah. dog came up and it, I wouldn't get in this woman's face now when val tells me a story and she does every once in a while driving in an la or something and someone pulls up to her and like rolls down the window and yells at her mm. it just it just drives me crazy yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not playing johnny tough guy but you do no, want to be like instinct. who does this it's val is the size of a peanut and she's driving a car yeah and she's doing her best and maybe she accidentally cut you off or something yeah 
calm the fuck down. But you see how angry I get at Step other of- people's roosters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some yeah. people don't have roosters though. They have alligator monsters. You know, like like mm-hmm. I, it makes me grateful that I just have a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But your rooster is not it's, it's like, not that. Those, those are misguided roosters out in the world. Like yeah. that they're rooster 90% of the time. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yours yours the- is really backed off into a point where it's it, it very seldom will come out and it's self-preservation. Well, you're making me realize that maybe it is healthier. I'm still trying to figure this out all these years later. We've been talking about things like this on this podcast for a long time. Yeah. Like the appropriate use of anger mm-hmm. or confrontation. Yeah. And like some, look, we could sit here and pontificate and I can act like I'm all zen about how I perform. And then one thing, someone could say something from the audience and, and all of a sudden it comes out without your control. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, well, that that's what makes Rooster kind of crazy is like, this is me making an effort to not let him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I actually haven't completely like blacked out. Yeah, right. Like I know what's happening yeah. and believe it or not, I'm saying every fifth thing the rooster is whispering for me to say. You know, it's so funny as you say it though. And I, I hate to keep coming back to the, to the gig. You have me conscious of like the audience not <laughs> doing corporate gigs. Yeah. But, uh, your rooster on that night in Las Vegas <laughs> was lovable, hilarious, sweaty Pete. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, your rooster is not like, it's not like Bill Burr Dice getting Clay. up there and attacking yeah. the yeah, 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 Philadelphia yeah. Eagle fans. Right, it right. It was this lovable, this lovable guy up there, like, right. just eating oh, shit. You're kind. But really, I mean, that's like, your rooster is not a someone that's like, rolling down the window and cursing at Val. That's certainly true. I Maybe I shouldn't even confuse those terms because I like what you said. Those people are roosters all the time and then they turn into like T-Rexes. <laughs> yeah, And yeah. they're just nasty. Right. And you almost, you almost do want to catch them and be like, big man yelling at, just don't, don't yell at Val as a rule. If people come close to your shit yeah. and your life and your people you love. Yeah. Yeah. This is, There's uh, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Some people have to back the fuck up. <laughs> they do. <laughs> this is a side of Tom Pop I didn't expect. <laughs> they do. They the have hammer to. hammer drop. Well, you, you've got people you love. Yeah. And there are people out there that want to yeah. think they can cross that. How many guns do you own? None. <laughs> I have three bats. and a <laughs> Oh, you're a bat guy? I'm a bat guy. You're a bat guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's so funny? I would love to have like a shotgun. I always picture myself with a shotgun like on the front steps. A, a double barrel. Yeah, like... Oh, or, oh, you want that's a single barrel. Yeah. And then I think, maybe I just need the sound effect. Maybe maybe I just need to download off YouTube and I play think, that on a speaker out the window when they come. I actually saw a thing where they can make shotguns that don't... You don't have to pump them. Uh-huh. Like, why would you want to... Pump? It seems archaic. Like, we've been doing that since Western times. <laughs> and you know the reason? Sends a message. Is because you want the... Yeah, you don't want them to have... You don't... Right. It's like in, in movies. Have you ever noticed in a movie they point a gun at you and it goes... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, no, it doesn't. <laughs> right. It's like the sound of the hammer pulling back. It's not. Right. It doesn't make any sound. No. It's a piece of metal. Yeah. But it, it, it's also... Somebody just recently told me that uh, Doritos, for example, or <laughs> Cheetos, uh-huh. any of these O's chips... Um, they can make it so there's no powder. Like uh-huh. they can make it taste sure. exactly the same. Of course. Without the powder, but uh, they're like, it's the ch- ch- is ha- licking it off your fingers. <laughs> us, uh, our, the fucking animals that eat Doritos like us want to go, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like you just got like taken into the police station in Wisconsin. Are you aware of Hanukkah donuts? Hmm? I, just, <laughs> I just learned about Hanukkah donuts. Katie, what's a Hanukkah donut? I I have a uh, my friend Avi. He lives in an Orthodox uh, part of L.A. And Katie, do we know Hanukkah? And he brought me Hanukkah donuts. Man, the Jewish people are so smart at so many things. Yeah, and they've been trying to. They they keep yelling. Why isn't Hanukkah? What's Christmas? What about Hanukkah? We've got a great thing too. And they're like, yeah, but what are you what are you pushing the the lighting of the, the yeah, menorah it's... and the dreidel. They push the donuts. They've got these Hanukkah donuts that only come out in December. 
jelly donuts and these chocolate cream stuffed donuts. Yes. What are you and doing? The, and the everybody should know this. Nobody knows Hanukkah this. Hanukkah gelt. Is it called gelt? Yeah. yeah, the coins. Again, not that impressive. Kids love those coins. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. But the donuts. If you push the donuts. You didn't even know it was a thing. If you go, it's a donut holiday with gifts. Right. Also, there was a miracle with oil. Don't don't ask us. <laughs> don't America bother. loves. Look, right. The donuts are the Santa Claus of Hanukkah. Agree. Yeah. And the cookies. Did I tell you this? I think you're gonna like this as a dad. <laughs> yeah. Why did you look at my belly when you said that? Did I? Yeah. I was trying to look at your <laughs> at your crotch. <laughs> Leela um, was just old enough last Christmas. This Christmas. She's four. Uh -huh. She's going to be like four and a half. Mm -hmm. Primo Christmas, mm -hmm. like age. She's wonderful. She understands Santa and all this stuff. But the last Christmas was the first Christmas that we put cookies out for Santa. Uh -huh. And I swear to you, this yeah. is not fake. I was like, we put them out for Santa. And then <laughs> Val was like, Leela's in bed Christmas Eve. Mm. And she's like, "Are we? you want a cookie? And I go, those are for Santa. And then I go, oh my God, I'm Sarah. <laughs> and I ate those cookies. And they were the best cookies I've ever had in my in my life. Really? They were the they were the cookies of the male indoctrination ceremony uh -huh. that I've been waiting for yeah, my whole life. Your communion. I, like, I it was the <laughs> holiest communion that said, You are now a dad. Yeah. You eat Santa's cookies. Amazing. You are the mouth. <laughs> of the unseen force that rewards kindness in your children. Yeah. And I was like, Santa is real. I pee out his dick every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That seems What's really weird good. about that story is that I've never eaten the cookies and I always wake up and they've been eaten. Dia de los muertos. <laughs> Ooh, Dia de los muertos. <laughs> uh, one of the greatest uh, Santa strokes that I had when the kids. Wait, this is a, what is a Santa stroke? Uh, stroke of genius. Oh. When my kids were little. I had this leather strap that had bells on it, sleigh bells on it, that you put on a door. This is very good, what you're telling me. And the kids were tucked into bed, and I went outside and just shook the thing. Yes, yes. And then for good measure. <laughs> <laughs> and then opened a bag of Doritos. And, and do they still talk about it? Mm-hmm. But what about when we heard the bells? Like they, they they came down like, we heard bells last night. We and you know bells. who else heard bells, Tom? Your neighbors. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> I don't remember. A grown man thought maybe Santa was real. As a guy was taking a bite of his Hanukkah donut. Wait a minute. <laughs> maybe, maybe it is a better holiday. That's fantastic because I remember one Christmas we were staying in someone <laughs> else's house or something, and I heard bells. Because uh -huh. I remember even having the thought, like, that doesn't seem like something my parents would do. Yeah. But my friend's parents did it, and I was like, Yeah. But I didn't know. I guess I knew, but I didn't know. It's probably right, old didn't enough. Care. <laughs> but I was like, still, like, respect. Like, yeah. That's a lot of effort. Yeah. Oh, that's It's fantastic. a good one. See, the, the sh problem with Hanukkah donuts is that we have Santa's cookies. We have. I don't mean to make yeah. a team. This is <laughs> my side. So there still are sweets and candy canes. Candy cane is a good candy. Look, peppermint. Look, these donuts are powerful. They're not going to knock down all the it's stuff not that Christmas to has. Take down Christmas. But it should elevate Hanukkah in a big way. And I cannot believe how many people are not. I was not aware. And I was, I've been running around town saying, yeah. "Have you heard about the donuts?" A lot of people have not. Can I say I haven't? Yeah. Can I? Can I say? There's there's a pro this is not a problem. Mm -hmm. This is a different approach. You okay. know when you win the lottery, you yeah. win fifty million dollars. Mm -hmm. Do you want it in a lump sum? Mm -hmm. That's Christmas. Do you want it in installments? <laughs> That's Hanukkah. Because it's the it's the restraint of the right. seven nights. It's the it's the sting. It's mm -hmm. the way Sting brings it, and but he doesn't come, and then he brings it, and he doesn't come. It's like Sting. I don't want Sting. I just want to blow one Christmas yeah. load. <laughs> I want a Sammy Hagar it. I don't want a Hagar. I don't want a Sting. Sting is Hanukkah. Sammy Hagar's Christmas. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. It's been a while since you've done the podcast. There's a few questions we ask 
okay. at the end. Okay, uh, I love these. Do you accept? I wish I was prepared. Jesus Christ, as your personal <laughs> thing. I'm just kidding. Um, have you ever almost died, Tom? Uh, no. I'm going to need you to think harder. There's, You've definitely almost died. Well, sucked into the ocean, hit by a car, pulled out to sea. Uh, I mean, look at you. You look like a health scare. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not go to the doctor? <laughs> uh, That's fine. I love a no. Yeah. Let's stick with no. You'll be the first and only no. I mean... There was something recently where I told my wife. Yeah, it wasn't. It almost died is really on the edge. I was driving early in the morning and um, this guy in front of me, like going to the airport to turn a rental car at like five in the morning. One of those horrible runs. And <laughs> this guy in front of me was like swerving and stuff and he went onto the freeway and I got onto the freeway and I went to go around him and he did that thing where you like come into my lane and they, you know, you realize it and go back and he didn't go back. He just hit the side of my car. Oh no. Out of nowhere. And, uh, but I was, at, I, this is why whenever I rent cars now, I get the biggest thing you could possibly give me, whatever it is. Really? Just, yeah. Give me a tank. I'm someplace I don't know shit's gonna go down probably so you, you tell the fine people at alamo all of this <laughs> yeah. shit's gonna go down i gonna give me what you got give me what you got I'm gonna kill somebody man. um yeah um but that was not like the edge of death yeah okay yeah i'm gonna say no i'm surprised never been blackout drunk someone pulls you out of traffic i'm just giving you all of mine yeah like almost hit by a bus or something like that kind of a thing yeah i guess not uh uh-uh. uh that's okay uh, have you ever? I'm, I'm getting strong no vibes from you on no. this next one. Okay, but listen to the third part. Okay. I feel like you're gonna go no, no, and then the third part. Patient. I want you to think about the third one. Okay, okay, yes, and to really give it a little gas. You disappointed me on the last question. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just apologize. kidding. I'm 100 kidding. Uh, I know I'm gonna like text you tonight and be like, wait, wait. I was followed by a serial killer for six <laughs> months. He kept sending me cut out parts of magazines. I blocked it out. One, you ever seen a ghost? Two, or a UFO? Or, listen to that, the broadness of the third question. Have you ever experienced anything that you can't explain? It could be a psychic. It could be like something that you saw, something strange. Just didn't make any sense. And you were anticipating what on this? No, no, and then I hope you could think about the third one. Right. Uh, first one was, have you seen a ghost? Ghost, yeah. I've seen a ghost. I have a picture of the ghost I saw. Second one, <laughs> have I ever seen a UFO? No, what are you doing? Second one. Have you, have you got any of them? I'm going to go. We'll, okay. we'll come back. Uh, second one, UFOs was the second yeah. one. Um, yeah, all the time. Uh, third one, unexplained stuff. My entire life is living in that realm. My entire life is Are you putting translating thoughts with, with my mother and I don't have to speak. We can com- communicate without it. Uh, yeah. Dead what? things, people, yeah, all the time, nonstop. Dreaming things constantly and having them happen during the day all the time. I can't believe this. All of the time. Why what? is that a surprise to you? Because you're very normal <laughs> you're a very normal fella uh-huh you're a suit you're a sharp suit nice glasses yeah reasonable but that hair. doesn't mean that we don't live in this mystical mushroom magical plot. mushroom plot okay is this the picture of the ghost i'm gonna show you the ghost is it your wallpaper <laughs> it should be it's in my favorites it's in his favorites okay i'm gonna look at the picture and you tell me the tale all right it's a great tale it's a good tale. It's an okay tale. Uh, I got one of those Nest cameras, and it was the first time that I had one. And I... A lot of hauntings are sponsored by Nest. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in Denver at the Comedy Works, and I'm backstage. 
and I got the alert on my phone. We've Holter seen guys. we've seen activity, <laughs> and I was and I I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know it did that, and I put into the link, and there's my dog Bella in my office just running around. I'm like, oh, that's such a cool thing. That's great, you know, because I had it facing in just to see my office while I was on the road, and. I said, oh, I said to my opening act, that would be a cool beginning of a horror movie. You get, you're out of town and you get an alert from your nest and you turn it on and there's just someone staring at you <laughs> in your office. <laughs> like, oh, that would be cool. As I say that, bling, I get another alert. As you say it. As I say it. And it's just clearly a burglar and he's taking something. And that's the picture that it took. Oh, weird. No, my gusta. Yeah. It's next to your Carlin uh, painting. It's in your podcast studio. <laughs> Isn't that your Carlin painting that's, that you have in your yeah, podcast studio? Yeah, that's my office. And uh, it's obviously a a ghost that is uh, from like the 1940s or something. He's got a trench coat and what seems to be like a gun. And I called my wife immediately and I'm like, who's in my office? She goes, it's just me and your daughter at home. There's nobody in there. There's no like reflection from the street. It's not that kind of a place. There's no, there's no, <laughs> there's nothing. Wait, can we to hold explain it up to the that. camera? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, will you do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. I love that he's kind of like put up your dukes. <laughs> there's something a little John Mulaney about this ghost. <laughs> Watch it, fella. Hey, He's on my back part of town. <laughs> You're not in here now. It's my <laughs> office now, pal. Yeah, Talk I mean, look the- at that. That is pretty intense. It is intense. And we have had feelings in that uh, house. There's you been know a what couple, it looks like? Slender couple Man. other things that happened. You know Slender Man? No. It's got that like no face skinny guy quality. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, no me gusta. Yeah, no me gusta. I can't gusta. believe it. I would have asked this question. We're talking about comedy for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. But okay, and but then you asked. What were the other ones? What you 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 and your mom can communicate without words? Yeah, we can pretty much a lot of times, especially when I was younger and still like still to this day like I'll think of asking her something and then she'll call and ask it or that kind of a thing. Really? Yeah. Wow. And when when I was younger, it was pretty, it happened with frequency for sure. Just predicting the future a little bit. Yeah. Or just like knowing what she was thinking or what was on her mind and, or vice versa and Hmm. articulating it while you're sitting there thinking like, should I, should I do that thing? And she'll just walk in. Are you going to do that thing? Are you thinking about doing that thing? Like, you know what well, I mean? Yeah. A lot. We were very in tune. Is, we is did live inside of her it. for almost 10 months. Yeah. And almost. then uh, dreams that predict the future? All the time. Really? Small things, not big things. Just like, like I'll wake up all the time. I'll wake up and, and um, think, why, what? That's weird that the only th- it's weird that I saw that red wagon. I wonder if I'm going to see that red wagon today. And then just keep goes down the hallway yeah. unmanned. <laughs> just <laughs> empty. <laughs> Sorry, I want to go for a wagon ride before I rob someone in your office. But it's always odd things like they you're not even and a lot of times you're not even thinking like am I going to see that? It's just there was just um you know, someone walking with a a green shopping bag or something and and you're just going about your day and you're like oh there it goes you're like that kind of thing whoa yeah spicy chicken spicy chicken what do you do you have any makeup what what that means Mm. you have the shining no i don't know what it is i think it's just uh i don't know i don't know how this place works but i do know that uh i do know that there's parts of it that are unseen that um, that stuff's going on and it kind of creeps through, yeah. creeps through the fabric sometimes. Well, you know, it's interesting. If you talk to a lot of spiritual folks like myself and you push them to the limits, meaning take keep going steps back, steps back, um, you'll get to, usually a lot of people have a, a, a idea that God is, uh, or everything is one thing. Yeah. Um, and that time is an illusion or time is how... Uh, these 
seemingly separate vessels experience eternity, you know, like in these bite-sized bits. But like, and even quantum physics would say that time might be an illusion and that everything seems to be happening at once and it's being experienced in these different things. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's true, then there's no reason why someone who is tuning into the allness of everything mm -hmm. could experience a past life or could see the future or could see the near future. Yeah. And now I feel like it's a comedy movie and I'm like, you've just been given this gift in a completely worthless way. <laughs> you know, like, it can't help us. It can't help you. Yeah. It's not, it, yeah. not really doing much for you. <laughs> Green grocery bag. I don't know where it's supposed to go I don't know or where, where should I'm I, supposed uh, to use it. Pitch this next special. <laughs> like, that, that would be useful. There is a, uh, I think that it does play into um, a comfort and a patience with the world. Mm. I think that it has a a kind of ex, um, there's an expectation or a lack of expectation of what's going on that uh, opens that up. Yeah, for sure. Wow, well, for sure. I think that. Um, so my rooster is cock blocking my psychic abilities. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, interesting. You know, so there are times in your life where it's higher more relaxed if you're more relaxed does it tune in more during the pandemic did you have it more uh i think that yeah it's hard yeah i think when you're i don't know i've been doing tm for like i don't know six years or eight eight years or something like that and that's kind of this is what i've been thinking about recently like as we're all trying to figure out all this stuff and like all the stuff you were listing and and like what what where are we playing <laughs> like what is this thing that we're playing and and like why is everybody searching for these religions and these answers are just weird just spirituality like why do we always have this like little yeah when you think about how intensely complicated and powerful a human brain is the human brain is we don't even understand our human brains can't figure out our human brains. Mm -hmm. They're so in tune and we're only using a certain portion of it. And it's like, I started thinking we're kind of carrying these incredibly intense antenna in our beings that is aware of something else. We're all, and it ends up chasing religion and chasing all that. We're all sensing it, but we don't have the capability to even Mm -hmm. decipher the information that's coming through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and interesting. It's like, whoa, ah, like we're we're there. We've got it. We're feeling it. We're sensing it, but we don't have a real handle on it. I would add, you are it. You, it's just completely impossible to really clear out all the static and and even if you could clear out the static and and observe pure mind, like capital M mind or or consciousness or awareness language and faculty would completely fail you. you. You wouldn't be able to come back and describe it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's funny that you said antenna because I would think your brain, my my metaphysical worldview is more like your brain is more of a instrument that's funneling mind, that's funneling the quality of think, not, not just thinking but being itself. Mm -hmm. And then you, what I'm saying is I saw but it. But it's still receiving. Yeah, it's it's the the part of the human. I mean, the way that we can study it and all that stuff, we're seeing it. But like, if we look in your brain, we can't really find you, right? You know what I'm There's saying? There's no consciousness globe. I tried in the van from the airport the other last night. I was like, I had to park in economy parking. We're taking a van, meaning it was full, and it's just this offsite parking. So I'm in this offsite parking van, and I said to this woman. The driver was like, do you guys remember where you parked? It had been a few days. And I was like, yeah, I do. And the woman was like, I do too. And I go, isn't that weird? Where is that memory? Like, what did we just do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, where did we go? And, you know, there's no physical, ra it's not like it's written down. Mm -hmm. And even if it were just written or a little slide or a mm -hmm. little movie file, who's finding it? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, all, all that stuff is yeah, such yeah. a mystery. So I said to the woman, I was like, isn't it weird? Like, how did we find that memory? Where is that memory? And she just was like, yeah. <laughs> was yeah like, she's like, I'm just finding my car, yeah. pal. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody wants to talk about this stuff. But, but whether, I think, whether I or think, not that's literally true, I, I think I'm agreeing with you that there's more going on than we understand. Yeah, and I think, I think at the end, accepting that 
no one really has a handle on it. Even the, the greatest philosophers and religious figures and thinkers. I think it's, I think uh, the reason why I, I am comfortable and aware and maybe dream that stuff and whatever is um, knowing that there's not really <laughs> an answer and it it but it's a pretty cool thing just to know that we're just observers. Yeah. Like just like what you did in that van is like, oof, that was pretty cool. That's pretty detached mm. and out of yourself but in yourself mm. and you kind of like it's all happening. I don't have to find the answers, but I think it's maybe it's enough just to be a cool observer of it all. Yeah. Right. And you get these little winks. Yeah. Like you get winks. You, right. Right. From right. the universe. Yeah. And then you can, we say this on the show all the time, but then you can become the wink. Mm -hmm. Like then you telling these stories, maybe are the wink to the people listening to yeah. it. Yeah. And it's this little reminder. I, I tend to like dream language. Some people get freaked out by it, but mm. I'm like, we're having a strange dream. <laughs> yeah. And like, don't forget that we're having strange dreams. Yeah. It, I mean, we don't have time to get it. We do, but yeah. I'm not going to get all into it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I will quote one thing. It's like, the idea that everything is made of consciousness isn't actually that hard of a stretch, meaning there's nothing to seeing except sight, or there's nothing to what you perceive except seeing, and there's nothing to seeing except knowing, meaning it's a phenomenon that happens in your consciousness. Mm -hmm. or, or touching is... Feeling and feeling happens, and meaning everything is built and put together in this thing that we don't know. Mm -hmm. It's very matrix. It's like these are electrical signals interpreted by your brain. So yeah. when you say and reality is a dream, you're really saying reality is made of mind or reality is made of consciousness. We have an opposite view in the West, which is that we are conscious and we perceive a world that is here. Mm -hmm. um, but really, there's not. I know. The dream is studying the dream. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you study the dream from within the dream and then you go like, this isn't a dream, but you're using your dream to be like, this isn't a dream. I know. There's no way to I get mean, outside just, of the dream. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, just is there consciousness? Is right. that a thing? I mean, okay, go down that wormhole for the rest of your life. Yeah. And you're not going to really come out with an answer. No one has. Um, maybe all the discussion is pushing us towards a place or a time where someone will crack it or we will will evolve into a, a a state where we can but it's not gonna happen in these next 50 years so I think it's just a cool thing to be to not fight it and just be aware of of it mm -hmm. you know that's just where I'm at <laughs> right well that's that's my daughter's name the the dance. Lila means the dance of the universe. Yeah. You can just, you can dance the dance. Yeah. 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 And not worry too much. Yeah. That's my favorite question. If you ask an Eckhart Tolle or a Rupert Spire or whoever of these people that I like, you go, is there anything to worry about? Mm. They would all say no. Right, exactly. <laughs> but there's, there's a great comfort in that. Yeah. Until someone rolls the window down and yells at your wife, and then you're like, right. But instinct is saying, I want to preserve this life that I have right here. Right. Yeah, that's true. Well, <laughs> yeah. nothing can attack you. It's not what happens to you. It's your thoughts about what happens to you that are attacking you. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even if I'm telling you you're not shit, it's like, yeah, but Pete, Pete might just be mad at himself. or You don't, you don't know unless mm -hmm. you interpret it in a certain way. And we're back to the guy walking in front of his wife, walking the dog. Right. Like I am being attacked. Right. And then that'll either be... Uh, confirmed by reality but what's interesting about spirituality is it's reminding you that you have this other choice right where there's another way to interpret what's happening yeah yeah and have fewer thoughts fewer expectations and and therefore fewer interpretations of what's happening i mean you can see things more clearly bye which bye again, rooster we're back to the rooster i'm interpreting what should be happening and what should, what, what yeah. is happening and i'm wrong on every count yeah, and the and when I watch Eckhart Tolle, when I saw him in L.A. recently, terrible venue, terrible sound, everything <laughs> from where I was sitting. Yeah, I was roostering on his behalf. I was uh -huh. like, "This sucks." <laughs> yeah. He seemed totally fine. Yeah, he was like <laughs> right. beyond totally fine. He had one of those Madonna mics that kept breaking, <laughs> and yeah. he was just like, I'll, "I'll wait for a new microphone." I was like, <laughs> "Oh, I see. I right. see. I get it. I can't." I can't yeah. yet do it, but I I see there's a human potential to being like. And you know what he was asking in the middle when it wasn't working, but in his quiet little way. What's that? What's happening right now? What's happening right now? What's happening? Yeah, this isn't how it went the other night. 
in fact, that's one of my favorite practices of his. It's also in A Course in Miracles, but it's like you look at things and you drop the label. Like if you could stop telling this thing it's a couch yeah. and looking at it instead of telling it what it is, asking it what it is, mm -hmm. I, I'll say from experience you can trip balls that way. Yeah. In fact, I would say that's what psychedelics are doing is it's taking you from a place of telling reality what it is to asking it what it is. And when you ask it what it is, it'll show you what it is and it's not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. Let's do some coke. <laughs> we just do a bunch of cocaine. <laughs> wow, the last five minutes of the podcast were very intense. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do have a, I do have a, and we don't have time to go into it, but I, uh, there is a, I'm a little suspicious of the, psychedelics are showing us the way sure because you're also on drugs you're also putting your brain into a state that is you're you're igniting parts of it that is creating that feeling true you know what i mean like it's interesting when you consider that science says that this is a hallucination this is just a hallucination that we agree upon yeah you know what i'm saying so but, psychedelics make you have a different hallucination right but i would add, i would say the lesson is in the constant between those two states is still consciousness. Whether or not you're perceiving right. me sitting on this couch or me with a bobble clown head uh -huh. with a spring neck and I'm vomiting Tic Tacs. Yeah. Like it, it's still the one thing that carried over between those two experiences that is in your dreaming state and your waking state and was with you when you were a child and is with you now and is actually the same as when you were a child and is the same now. That is the only thing that should be interesting. Mm -hmm. And Rupert Spire actually addresses that. He's like, awareness or, or consciousness, he, he likes awareness, yeah. is there whether, and he uses the word hallucinating. He's there, it's there when you're dreaming, it's there when you're a child, right. it's there when you're working, it's there when you're playing, it's when you're happy, when you're sad, when you're depressed, when you're sick, when you're this. And he goes, and when you're hallucinating, it doesn't matter. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, the problem I have with it is when people all of a sudden, and maybe because they're closed off in other parts of their life, when they take hallucinogenics and then they think, "Oh, now I'm now I'm aware." Right. Well, you could have been aware before you took it. Completely agree. You know what I mean? It, I don't see that as the thing that is unlocking this other realm. At a certain point, well, um, Trungpa Rinpoche called it um, a delusion inside of a delusion. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and I, I, my life has been greatly served by psychedelics, but I've also seen it. I can't speak to other people, but I've seen a lot of people being like, "I'm going to ring the bell for the three hundredth time," and you're like, at a certain point, <laughs> right? <laughs> is it a tool or is it is it what is it? I can't yeah. speak to what it is. I mean, it's cool, it's fun, it's a great blessing, it's all that. It's yeah, but hey, it doesn't hey, answer. Look, but I don't thing. see that. I don't see that. That is the. I think you could live a life without it. And know that what you saw through the haze of mushrooms was there. I just told, yes, I just told you that if you, so the prompt in A Course in Miracles is you look at this cushion and you say, I, above all else, I want to see this cushion differently. Yeah. And if you just take 10 minutes and really slow your breath down uh -huh. and be calm and look at your hand or look at a yeah. tree and say, above all else, I want to see this tree differently. Mm hmm you'll know what it feels like to take mushrooms. The right. great thing about mushrooms is right. you don't have to have any discipline. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm, but I'm yeah. telling you that it yeah, takes yeah. 10 minutes of mild discipline. Uh -huh. And I would say a belief that it's going to work. You have to kind of like go yeah. into it being like, this is this is happening. Right. I, I don't mean I'm going to trip, but like you're you're committed. Yeah. You 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 do it and you do it with... with, yeah. with uh, meaning right right then you then you'll because i I've, I've done mushrooms and i've done that exercise and both have the same sort of weird like uh-huh what is happening right yeah now? yeah really, yeah really yeah cool. yeah if, if mushrooms were the only answer i mean right <laughs> right yeah no 100 percent. yeah when we really know that the the real answer is hanukkah donuts <laughs> CDs or HDs, depending on how you spell it. This is this is. You guys like CDs? I'm sorry, Love HDs. CDs. HDs. Do you like high def or <laughs> compact discs? The last and final question, Tom Pop. Oh. We went everywhere. Yes, we did it all. Uh huh. Last time we did the podcast, we weren't asking this question. Pretty sure. I'm not sure. Can you tell me the time in your life you laughed the hardest in your life? <laughs> Or, barring that, where are you? How, like any great one, 
you're young, oh. tears are streaming. Yeah. You're like, somebody fell, I, I'll somebody you, farted. Yeah, I'm with you. I got a recent one and I'll do it. Um, it's when my kids said that um, I got the new phone. It's so big. I can't swim. Oh my God. So big. Too big. Uh, um, this is what my kids say. I've never saw my father laugh harder than this moment. Uh, and they say it all the time. And they're right. It was, I think it's probably. I've never had a, th we've never had a third person account. Like someone else. Yeah, said, said oh no, this, this is, is when you, and I was, I was really just out of control. And it's so stupid. It's so great. I can't wait. Uh, that I found, I discovered uh, the fart app on your phone. And we were with my parents at, at their house. And I found the fart app on my phone. And I'm just playing all the different farts. There's like the nuclear fart and the are they real farts? And, and the wet fart and the I don't know if they're real. you'd know I, you'd know you're yeah you'd they know. seem synthetic okay but still very effective. People actually prefer the synthetic. <laughs> yeah, they're they're powerful. Yeah, yeah nobody wants they're very the real powerful. some guy just <laughs> doing it. It would take years. To it get would all take those years in. to get all the it's different varietals. <laughs> and I'm playing the fart noises. And it's making my mother angry. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, will you stop that? <laughs> Tom, I'm serious. Will you? Uh, <laughs> Tom, we and it's and I, and it's making her angrier and angrier. And every time I let, and it's it'll be quiet, and then <laughs> a time, you, you're hitting little ones, little ones, big ones, like, and I. Just like a child yes. with my mom all over again, was crying, laughing, just tears turning purple at this dumb activity of just hitting more fart noises that was making my mother just pull her hair. I am not kidding. It is, will you stop that? We, don't get his phone. All right, I won't do it. <laughs> I just tears. And my daughters to this day are like, we never saw you laugh harder in your life. Because a lot of our answers to this question <laughs> is church laughter. You, it has to be right. a situation where you're not supposed to laugh. Right, right. <laughs> and that's where the religious have an advantage. They have a leg up in this question. Uh -huh. But you had your mother. Yeah. <laughs> the voice of your superego, grow up, stop yeah. it. Yeah. And f quite frankly, you should know how this makes me feel because we're psychically bonded. Right, exactly. And this made it stop. so much funnier. <laughs> 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 Tommy Pops, uh, you're the best. Thanks for coming on. You have a book. It's coming out in January, though, or something like. June? No, I have my Netflix special coming no, out. No, no, JK, December thirteenth. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, a week from today. Okay, right? Or is, what's today? When so it, it might, it'll be out. When people hear this, it'll be out. It'll be out. It's called What a Day. It just came out on Netflix. What a day. I like I it's I don't say that in the act. I just uh I say that in my life. Whenever I come in the kitchen in the morning with my family, I'm like, what a day, what a day. <laughs> and then at the end and I like it because by the by five o'clock it's what a day. Yes. <laughs> what a day. I can't believe you didn't you just did the bit. That's yeah, the bit. I know it's not in my <laughs> act at all. You're doing great is. You're doing great. You say is. you're doing great. Yeah, well. yeah. Well, congrats, man. I, Thanks, I'm man. excited to see it. What yeah. a day. Check it out. And um, yeah, my book doesn't come out till June, actually. All right. So uh, well, we won't even talk we'll, about we'll that. We'll talk again. All right. Uh, would you say keep it crispy? It's how we end. You say keep it crispy. Keep it crispy. <laughs>